Hello and welcome to Baysmore Hyder Stadium where today the Valdosta State University Blazers are taking on the Southern Arkansas University Mule Riders. Both teams are looking to rebound after season opening losses. This will be the first in-conference game for both teams that counts. Uh, both teams are looking to get off to a strong start in the GSC. So let's begin by looking at the Blazer offense and defense. Starting at the X receiver will be All-American Cedric Jones. Gerald Four will be the Y receiver today and he's number 19. Returning senior number six, R.J. Bastone, is the Z receiver. True freshman number 72, Mesh Wakamati, is at right tackle. Jamarian Brown's a left guard. He's number 66. Senior Edward Gregory is at center. Number 74, Kyle Fox, is at right guard. Jesus Torres is number 58, and he's at left tackle. The H receiver is number 84, Jackson Dean. The quarterback would be number 15, Kellen Lewis. And number three, Ronnie Nelson, is the running back. And big number 30, Gabe Moulds, the fullback. Trey, tell us a little bit about the defense. All right, Josh, on the defensive side of the ball today, we have number 50, Kiara Moore, at the defensive end position. Freshman Demetrius Bozeman will start a defensive tackle. At nose tackle, clog in the middle, Demario Jones. At the other defensive end spot, number 97, Melvin Black. Second team GSC player Larry Dean at outside linebacker. Demarcus Flanagan will see action at the middle linebacker position. Rising star number 4 to 4, Ratu Rebella will play opposite of Larry Dean. We have Alex Webster at right cornerback. Starting at free safety, true freshman Matt Pierce. Senior Josh Wiley at strong safety. And left cornerback number 24, Carlos Anderson. On special teams today, the kicker's number 89, Daniel Anderson. Jack Fulford's number 39, he'll be the punter. Number 16, Isaiah Jupiter will be returning the kicks. And for punt returns will be number 9, Owen Dixon. Trey, what are some of the key matchups to look for today? Well, on the VSU side of the ball, Josh, one of the key matchups to see how well this VSU passing attack fares against SAU's 4-2 defense since they like to have an extra corner out there to disrupt the passing game, which VSU loves to do the most. And for SAU, let's see how well their passing attack throws this VSU defense off its, off its feet a little bit since they had a little trouble with Newberry's similar scheme that they played a couple weeks ago. All right, and who will be some of the players to watch for? For SAU, we have Go South co-offensive freshman of the year, number 20, Mark Johnson. He's a running back. And for VSU, we have number 15, Kellen Lewis. Let's see how well he's able to bounce back after that loss to Newberry when he left the game in the third quarter. And with that, we're going to go to messages. But join us back here on VSU Channel 20 for the kickoff. There's a naval battle being fought on land by forces armed only with commitment and compassion. Because every day, Navy volunteers combat homelessness, hunger, loneliness, and illiteracy by initiating community programs that touch people's lives. And while their exploits aren't honored with medals, it's hard to imagine a more moving tribute. I got a ham sandwich and some pretzels. You want some pretzels? No. I'm about to some cookies or something. Like what? I don't know. Button orange. Get it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? You're not Jay. Why not? Jay never has me. What's up with that? Hey, you on a diet or something? Yeah, a diet. Jay's on a diet. That's all right, man. We, we understand. My mom's on a diet. <laughs> Everyone with alcohol and drug addiction is in the same boat. With treatment, you can find solid ground. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. And welcome back here to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Uh, the coin toss just occurred. Southern Arkansas won the coin toss but deferred it, so VSU will be receiving the ball first in this game. Blazers are lining up on the east, the west side of the field. The sun won't be a factor like it was in the last game. Last game, Newberry got the ball first, and uh, they were leading it down the field into the sun, but this time, not a lot of sun out here, so it won't really be a factor. Yeah, Josh, I've been waiting for this game for a long time just to see how well the Blazers secondary would handle this SA, SAU offense, Josh. I tell you what, Trey, there's actually been a good showing considering the weather. Blazer Nation's here almost in full force. Everybody's on their feet. Here's the kickoff. It's a short, low liner. Looks like it's received by number three, Ronnie Nelson, who's given a good return. 
Good stiff arm by Nelson. Brings it across the left side of the field. Takes it out to about the 45-yard line. Great return by Ronnie Nelson there. That was a real good return by Ronnie Nelson, making a heads-up play to make sure he got as many yards as he could. Yeah, he, he almost was brought down, but he put in a good stiff arm. As you can see here, Nelson's taking up the middle of the field and cuts to the left side of the field where he does that stiff arm to number 10. And is finally brought down by the shirt at about the 45-yard line. Actually, it's spotted at the 48-yard line. So the Blazers have great starting position out to about their own 48. And this is the kind of position you need to get your offense off to a quick start, Josh. It helps. Kellen Lewis is back in shotgun mode. The offense has four receivers and one back. The ball is snapped. Lewis hits Nelson out in the flats, who's brought down maybe for a loss. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but not much of a gain there, if at all. If at all. Yeah, like I said in the pregame, Josh, it was going to be an interesting matchup with those five cornerbacks out there trying to make sure they shut down the passing game of VSU. But not only with the five cornerbacks, I wonder if the weather is going to play a role in the passing game also. VSU lines up in a three-receiver set. The ball snapped. Fake to Nelson. Play action here. Looking deep to Cedric Jones, number eight. The ball is overthrown. There's a flag on the play. I also noticed that the defense lined up in a 3-4 formation that time, maybe to try to give VSU a different look for it already at the, at the very beginning of the game here. Yeah, the referees coming together discussing what the flag was. Haven't made a sign just yet. Offsides on the Blazers, it looks like, so we'll be backing up five yards. And these are mistakes that the Blazers don't need to make early, Josh. If, if we're going to make these kind of mistakes, hopefully that they are early, they'll go ahead and get them out the system and start making the better plays at the end, as the game goes on. Yeah, the Blazers have had a few penalties this year already. Again, they started the game against Newberry with a few penalties that put them in poor position. All right, it's again third down with 10 to go. Ball on the 48. Still in the first minute of the game. Kellen Lewis is looking for an option. Receives the uh, quick pitch to Ronnie Nelson, who's running up the middle of the field. Nelson's cutting it back to the left side, and he's tackled from behind, but he got the first down for sure, Trey. What did you see on that play? And that was a great block by Jackson Dean out there on the open field to try to give Ronnie Nelson just a little more space to run there. And Kellen Lewis seeing the pressure coming from the outside, he gave the quick pitch to Ronnie Nelson, who, who just takes what the defense is giving him, which is plenty of space to make the run right up the middle of the field. And as you can see, the block there by Jackson Dean to give his running back just a little more space. There's a quick shovel pass from Kellen Lewis to Ronnie Nelson, picked up close to 15 yards. It's a handoff to Nelson again, who's met at the line of scrimmage, didn't really get anywhere. But that's what you like to see from your running back. He made a little something out of nothing by making the first man miss to get a couple of yards. Yeah, he eluded the tackle. The tackle was made by number 33, Ben Williams. He's a linebacker. He's a senior. There's a pickup of two on the play for the Blazers. So second down with eight yards to go with the ball on the 36. Nelson receives a snap. Not excuse me. Hits, hits Cedric Jones, who runs across the middle. He's going to the right side trying to make something happen. And he's met by a swarm of Southern Arkansas players. What happened on that play, Trey? That's just where the, the defense read the play as soon as it got off, and they just made the good stop. It was actually Kellen Lewis that made the pass there. I said Nelson. And, and that, even though this might not be the perfect time to talk about this, but that just brought Cedric Jones one catch closer to moving up into the second place in the record books. He is. He's moving up in the receptions and receiving yards. We'll give you those statistics here shortly. The ball is now on the 45-yard line. There was a loss on that play. It's third and 17. Lewis with the snap. He hits Ronnie Nelson out in the flats. who has to make a move to make something happen. He does, but he doesn't get very far. He's brought down at about the 40, 39-yard line. It looks is where they're spotting it. And this is where a lot of defenses have problems with Ronnie Nelson when they're trying to tackle him in the open field. He's very quick and elusive, and he's able to make the bigger defenders who might be just a little bit slower than he is missing when he's out in the open. He did put on some flashy moves there, but unfortunately he couldn't get very far. He was grabbed by the jersey and slowed down. It was an unsuccessful drive by the Blazers on that particular attempt. Jack Fulford, the punter, is now out on the field. Jack had a great game against Newberry, averaged 47 and a half yards a punt. He's back there getting ready for the snap. He receives it. Does somewhat of a pooch kick to try and keep this one inside of the end zone. Oh, great bounce on the ball. 
The ball is going to be down. It looks like the 11-yard line. It's down by number 36, Sean Weathers. Sean Weathers is a linebacker. He's a senior. So the Blazers' defense already has Southern Arkansas somewhat pinned down on this play, on this series. Good field position for the defense. Yeah, it's putting the defense in a position now where they can hopefully either make a big stop and then give the offense good field position, or if not that, they can go ahead and get a turnover here and probably take it back in themselves. Well, there's 11 minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter. The Blazers again had a somewhat unsuccessful first drive. We're unable to cash in on any points. Zero to zero is the score. Arkansas has two men in motion, kind of shifting things around, trying to throw the defense off. There's a pitch to the left side, and it goes nowhere. The defense is all over that one. They swarm the running back and take him down at about the eight-yard line. And he was met by a host of Blazers on that play, Josh. The Blazers were keeping their eyes on the quarterback, and they've seen him when he gave the quick pitch off, as you can see here. And then they got in the backfield very quickly and disrupted. As you can see, number 24, Carlos Sanderson right there making a big stop. And that swarm defense was there in fashion. There were three or four guys there right when the guy received the pitch. Southern Arkansas has two receivers and two, two backs. Ball's handed off. And the running back again is met right at the line of scrimmage. This running hasn't worked against VSU thus far. Strong defense there on the part of the Blazers. Yeah, number four to four, Ratua Bell is picking up where he left off last game. Last game he had ten tackles. He made a very big number impact. Four, that helped even, him. He wasn't even scheduled to be a starter, but he came in off the bench and he helped this Blazer defense out where they really needed it. He had a big impact in the last game. That run was by Chris Metcalf. He's a senior. He's the running back. It's 5'11", 208. He's got a decent size on him for a running back. Probably see a lot of him tonight. Quarterback Ryan McCombie's under center. Got a guy in motion. Number five, Carlos Brown. It's a fake handoff. There's pressure. The pass was for Carlos Brown, but it was incomplete. A lot of pressure there, Trey. And that's what you like to see from this Blazer defense. It's doing what it should have did the last game, but getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback and making him throw the ball before he wanted to to help this offense out by putting him in great field position now, Josh. Well, it's a three and out for the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders. That was a great start for the Blazer defense. Hope to see more of that tonight. Number six, R.J. Bastone is back to return the punt. He's not, it's not his typical role, but he's done it several times in the past. Got the snap. It's a running kick. It's kicked is a good kick. It landed at about the 40-yard line where a Southern Arkansas player downed it. Unsure, it looked like the ball almost made contact with R.J. Stone, which would have been a turnover, but it turns out it did not make contact. So it is Blazer football starting on about the 36-yard line. Yeah, Josh, and if you notice, Ronnie Nelson touched the balls on six times on VSU's first drive there. Let's see if that's a trend that continues here on this next drive. I was going to ask you that, Trey. So with the weather and with the 4-2 defense that Southern Arkansas traditionally brings, do you expect passing to be a, a big part of the Blazer scheme? It depends on how these defensive backs decide to play the, the passing game. If they're going to meet their man at the line and try to be a little physical with them and try to keep them from getting through their routes and making sure the quarterback has the weight for his wide receivers to get open. It, it'll be interesting. It depends if they do coverage or man-to-man -man matchups. The Blazers have four receivers. Kellen Lewis looks downfield, finds R.J. Bastone. It's going to be a pretty decent pickup. It's going to be close to a first down. Yeah, that's what you like to see from your wide receivers. Find a soft spot in the defense. Wait for the quarterback to find it. As you can see, Lewis drops back. He finds his man, and he hits him. Yep. And he just drops down with it after he's been tapped. Well, a second down with one yard to go. The ball's on the 47-yard line. Got a man in motion. That's Gabe Mould, big fullback. The handoff is a Derek Harris. There's a flag on the field. We'll have to see exactly what the flag's for. I hope it's not an offsides. It looked like Gabe Mould got a pretty pretty quick jump there. He may have reached the line before the ball was snapped. Waiting to get a signal from the referees. There are nine minutes and 43 seconds left. The score is still 0-0. Looks like VSU's being backed up. I think the penalty may be against them. Maybe another offsides penalty. It's on Derek Harris, uh, illegal motion on the offense. Derek Harris, number two. Did you see exactly what happened there? Looked like he just got a little antsy and was ready to go ahead and make the play. Well, hopefully we'll 
continue that trend, just not get penalized for it. The Blazers continue to do business. Lewis is on the scramble. He's moving towards the right side of the field. Looks, at, looks in the middle of the field and finds number 19. That is Gerald Ford, the freshman wide receiver who got the start tonight. And the main thing I can say that a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure the coaches love this about Kellen Lewis. As you can see, he sees the pressure coming right at him, so he goes ahead and he takes, tucks the ball and runs with it. But at the same time, he's keeping his eyes down the field. And he finds his man, number 19, Gerald Ford, who just catches the ball and falls down. And with that, the Blazers have a first down. Another pass to Gerald Ford, who receives it on the right side of the field and is brought down quickly. Another flag on the play. That's several flags we've already seen, Trey. And I thought it was illegal to be littering like this, Josh, but I guess it's okay if you're on the football field. There is cloth all over this field tonight. Hopefully that won't be a continuing trend. That slows the game down usually, but I like to see the players play unless it's an obvious penalty. But another nice catch by Gerald Ford. He seems to be good at catching the ball with his hands. It doesn't come in and hit him in the chest, but he uses his hands, which is a good sign for receivers. That's, that's exactly how you like for your receivers to catch the ball, Josh, with their hands and not with their body. There's an illegal defense. substitution on the defense, which is Southern Arkansas. So the first down will be replayed. There's now nine minutes and nine seconds on the clock. The score is 0-0. First and ten, Blazers. The ball's on the 45-yard line. Lewis checking out the defense. Receives a snap, fakes the handoff to David Arnold and looks downfield. Finds Cedric Jones in the middle of the field. Trey is getting that much closer. Was it two receptions now until he's a, in third place or second place of receiving? Yeah, he's slowly moving up the stat charts. He keeps this up and has a big game. We can see Cedric Jones moving up, moving up in the record books. Well, it's another first down for the Blazers, so they're getting consistent on this drive. Consistency is important. That's something we didn't experience a whole lot of against Newberry. The handoff. It's run up the middle by number 25, Michael Brown. Brown picks up a decent gain right there, probably about eight yards. And that's another one of the scat backs with VSU. See, the thing is with VSU, they have a, a very deep running back group. So even if Ronnie Nelson isn't in there to make the play, they have somebody else they can pick to put in and let him do the exact same thing. Yeah, Brown's only a sophomore. There's a snap. The throw is to Cedric Jones, who catches the ball on his knees, but that'll be enough for a first down. So there's Jones with another reception. He's being active early. And it looks like the SAU defense is just playing off the receivers and just giving these short yardage plays, and Kellen Lewis is just picking them off. I'm pretty sure he's thinking, hey, if you're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it all day. And he will. Between his arm and scrambling, he can pick up yardage. He receives a snap and again hands it off to Michael Brown, who's brought down pretty quickly. There's going to be a loss on the play there. It'll be a short loss, probably about a yard or two. Number 25, Michael Brown with the carry. He's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Michael Brown now with two carries on the night. He's already seeing more. He's already seeing action. And that was number 90, Ryan Terry, who was actually one of the standout players on the SAU defense who got back there and made the stop. Yeah, Terry's definitely a playmaker. Coach Dean mentioned in his show on Monday night that he was going to be a guy to watch for. Along with number 56, here comes the snap. It is brought down by Gerald Ford again. This guy has good hands, Trey. I haven't seen a whole lot of him. We didn't see much of him again in the last game, but he's being active. He's made a few good receptions already. We had a few issues on the offensive line last game, but as you can see there, Gerald Ford just snatches a ball out of the air and brings it down for completion. Ball is handed off to David Arnold, who finds space. He takes it all the way down to about the Blazer, excuse me, to about the two-yard line. And that is how you like to see your running backs run between the tackles. If you're going to make sure that you get the yardage right up the middle, give it to David Arnold. He'll pound it in there. Arnold's a bigger guy. He's listed at 5'10", 213 pounds. He's only a sophomore also. Once he gets that full head of steam, he's tough to bring down. We have two receiver, two receiver set, two, two running backs in the backfield. Again, it's handed off to Arnold, who takes it down to about the one-yard line. So it'll be second and short. And that was something that we don't see from VSU often when they had three backs in the backfield with Kellen Lewis on that play. I guess trying to confuse the SAU defense just a little bit. So VSU coming out trying to be tricky here early, Josh. There's two backs in the field right now, two wide receivers. Oh, there are three backs, excuse me. There's three backs in the field using that truck. The ball's fumbled, but Kellen Lewis picks it up and puts it in for six. 
What looked like was a fumble play turned out to be beneficial for the Blazers on that one, Trey. Like it might have been a perfect mistake on, the, on behalf of the Blazers there, Josh. When I originally looked at the play, I saw three in the backfield. I thought David Arnold, number 10, was actually Kellen Lewis' shotgun. But I, look, I had to look back up. There were three running backs back there. That's hey, something we haven't seen a lot of. And I guess that's what it's for. If it can fool the announcers, maybe it can also fool some defenses. Well, true freshman Daniel Anderson on for the extra point. Snap and holds good. The kick's good. So the Blazers are now up 7 to nothing with 6 minutes and 13 seconds left in the first quarter. That was a strong job there on the Blazers, on the part of the Blazers there, Trey. What did you see out of the VSU offense? The VSU offense was doing a lot of things that they didn't do against Newberry. They were taking the small yardage plays, and then they kept converting to getting the first downs, which is what they need to do anyway. So, I mean, if VSU can keep this up all night, and if the Southern Arkansas defense wants to keep giving up the short yardage plays, I'm pretty sure VSU will keep taking it and keep turning it into points. And that is something I noticed there. There haven't been a whole lot of attempts for, for bombs for big plays downfield. There's only been one, and it was incomplete. But these short yardage gains have been very productive for the Blazers, help them get into a rhythm. So maybe we'll see more of that. Blazers getting ready to kick off. No one's on the field just yet. As the Blazer Athletic Boosters will convene the weekly coaches luncheon this Monday in the Mac Quick note, we apologize for our viewers. Due to the rain, we are only broadcasting with two cameras, so the quality of the broadcast may be a little more difficult to get our shots where they need to be, but hang with us. We'll be there. We'll be here all night. Even with the rain, we decided to bring the game live on Internet and Channel 20. Doing play-by-play. Play. You might not be able to hear, you might not be able to see everything, but I guarantee you, you'll hear every single bit of action that's going on here at Baysmore Heider Stadium. And the kicking team is on the field. Daniel Anderson setting up the ball. In warm-ups, we saw him putting a few into the end zone. He, he, has, he has a strong leg. He's lining up now for the kick. Blazer Nation's on their feet, Trey. The student section is, has a pretty good amount of people there, but they usually do. The kick's off. It's another good kick. It's down to about the five-yard line. It's being brought back by number 17, who was brought down at about the 32-yard line. Number 17 number was Tra Tra Travaris Brown. He's a wide receiver for Southern Arkansas. He's also a sophomore, so he has a couple more years. And he, that was a pretty good return right there. So give him a couple more years of experience, he might be a deadly weapon for him. SAU in a couple in a few years to come. Yeah, he looked pretty quick on that one, eluded a few tackles and got up to about is the ball is gonna be placed at the 32 yard line. So pretty decent field position starting here with Southern Arkansas. But in that last drive trade, they did not fool the Blazer defense even for a play. Not at all. This Blazer defense is looking to make a statement after what happened against him by Newberry. McComey. Ryan McComey just received the snap. Looking out there, finds a receiver. It's like it was number eight, Isaac Marufo. He's a sophomore for Southern Arkansas. You know, Trey, both of these teams had well over a week. They had two weeks to prepare for one another after they both had an off week last year, last last week. So they probably have some schemes that they're going to be bringing out tonight to try and fool the other one. Yeah, I see the Blazers trying to open it a good little bit here to try to get back into things after that heartbreaking loss. I mean, I'm pretty sure they just want to try to get back in the groove of things and regained their dominance at, at the top of the GSC. It was a four receiver set for Southern Arkansas. Number five in, the, in motion, the ball is handed off. Looks to be the number 21, Chris Metcalf, who's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, maybe a yard on that play. There's now five minutes and 12 seconds. The clock still moving. Again, it's seven to nothing Blazers. Had a strong scoring job in the last possession. It'll be third down and eight with the ball on the 34 now for Southern Arkansas. And like that was Marcel Horn in on that tackle. It like he's, he's fired up tonight. This plays a defense it's like they can't ready to play tonight, Josh. Yep. And, and, and I see it already. And the crowds are behind them. So let's see what they, get, they do right here on this play, Josh. Yep. The VSU crowd is on their feet cheering on the defense, hoping for another stop here. Make it two consecutive three and outs. The ball is snapped. There's a flag on the play. The ball was passed to number 80, who is Trentis Weatherspoon, the tight end, but he was brought down quickly. We'll have to see what the flag is on. There is a flag on the play. Delay of game on the offense prior to the snap. So that's going to add tax some yardage onto the third down. 
There's now four minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock. The clock was stopped with that penalty. The ball looks to be spotted on the 29-yard line, so they have a lot of distance to make up now just to get that first down, Trey. Putting the Blazer defense in, in a great position to get this stop and get the ball right back to their offense. Yep, it's third and 13. Again, the ball's on the 29-yard line. Blazer defense is moving around. Ryan McComey receives the snap. He's looking. He's on the scramble. He's on the move. Larry Dean in pursuit. He is brought down. There's a fumble on the field. Looks to be recovered by VSU. It is. Oh, it's not recovered by VSU. The referee says it's still going with Southern Arkansas. So at this point, I guess they'll just be punting the ball. Even if that's not a fumble, as you can see right here, McComb is looking downfield, trying to find his man, but then he has number 44 right back, right to rebel in, his, in the backfield, in his face, and then number 32, Larry Dean, comes up also to try to make the play until he's brought down by Melvin Black, who makes the, who forces the fumble, but the Blazers were unable to recover. Even though the Blazers weren't able to get on the ball and put their offense in great field position, they still came up with the stop, which is also good. From that view, it looked like Chauncey DeBose re actually recovered the fumble, but evidently the referee saw something we didn't see on the field. It's now three minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. The punter's on the field. Another su successful series by the Blazer defense. Seems to be a timeout on the field. Valdos has took the timeout. Catch the David Dean Show on VSU TV every Monday at 9 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. Check t TV guy listings for other airings of the David Dean Show here on VSU TV. So VSU took a timeout. What do you think they're doing here, Trey? Are they coming up with a scheme? or Maybe Southern Arkansas wants to talk everything over. Maybe they feel as if they, they can probably sneak a play out here on VSU. But then again, they might be just trying to take a breather here against this, this swarming defense since it's been after them all night. Yeah, the swarm has been in full effect. Every, every time we've seen the ball in, in a Southern Arkansas player's hands, there's been several black jerseys around him. And Ryan McComey, the, the mule rider quarterback, is, he's been pressured several times already, so the Blazer defensive line is causing havoc for that quarterback. And that's what I look for this VSU defense to do since they know the quarterback is a sophomore. He's probably still a little inexperienced and a little wet behind the ears, so they probably put a lot of pressure in his face to try to rattle him a little bit. Hopefully they can come away with the win. That's true. Number six, R.J. Bastone is back to receive the punt again. He's standing on about the 32-yard line. Zach Massengill is their punter. He receives the snap, gets the punt off. It looks like it may have been deflected potentially. It didn't fall. Oh, the ball hits. The ball is going to be Southern Arkansas's ball, it looks like. It hit the ground and bounced up and hit number 45, Tay Ogletree, who was not expecting the ball to hit him. And, and so it's officially Southern Arkansas, uh, Southern Arkansas ball, and they will be in VSU territory. And there was nothing Ogletree could do about that. He was just trying to protect the ball and make sure that his man didn't get hit. But then the thing is, he wasn't looking for it, and then it hit him right on the leg. It was a really short punt. Initially, I thought maybe it was a hand was on it. Somebody got a hand on it, but... I can't tell if he got it off cleanly and just botched it a little bit or what happened, but Tay Ogletree certainly wasn't expecting it either. But so this is also bad for the defense because the defense just made a three and made the offense forced the three and out and I'd have to get right back on the field to try to do the same thing. It's always tough when you give an offense a second chance, but this, this Blazer defense hasn't budged at all so far, so hopefully they'll keep up that trend and get the ball right back. It's just an opportunity for someone else to step up and make a play. Ryan McComey receives a snap, fakes a handoff, Looks out to his receiver, who was hit immediately by Larry Dean. Larry Dean brings him down, either the line of scrimmage, maybe in the backfield. Great play by Larry Dean there. He read it all the way, Trey. And that's what happens when Larry Dean sees the play. He makes sure that he gets there to blow it up immediately. He sees the wide receiver out in the flat, and he gets there, and he puts the helmet on him. Looks like the receiver was number 17, Travaris Brown. Received the pass, but the coaches have nothing but good things to say about Larry Dean, about his leadership and his play. Great work ethic, work ethic, and it was showing off on that play how quickly he got there and shut it down. Blazer Nation again up on their feet. Man in motion, number 80, the tight end. Ball is snapped. Throws off his back foot, and it is incomplete. It looked like it was intended for Quentin Porter, but it wasn't all that close to him. Potential pickoff right there. It looked like SAU was trying to set up a screen there, but it just didn't go the way they expected it to. We had They had their big tight end, Trentice Weatherspoon, in motion there. Weatherspoon's a pretty big guy, 6'3", 265. 
It was more of a decoy on that play than anything else. Well, there's another third long situation for Southern Arkansas. It's third and 12 with the ball on the 46. Two minutes and 52 seconds left on the clock. Blazers again ahead, seven to nothing. Carlos Anderson following the receiver. There's a receiver found in the middle of the field, but he drops the pass. It was number 10, Quentin Porter again. So with that drop pass, it's fourth down. It looked like the punting team was getting ready to jump back out on the field, so the Blazers may be eluding that. But there's a flag on the play in the backfield. Did you see anything there, Trey? I did not, but that just happened to be a little bit of luck on the side of VSU. If the wide receiver had probably kept his eye on the ball and looked it in instead of trying to run before he got it, it might have been a first down for SAU. Yeah, it looked like he was concentrating on what he was about to do with the ball before he actually received it. That's why they always say don't count your eggs before they hash, Josh. Melvin Black, number 97 on VSU's defense, has been hit with a personal foul penalty. That puts Southern Arkansas in great territory and with the first down. So the ball is now placed on the 39-yard line in VSU territory. Huge break for Southern Arkansas. It's first down, 2 minutes 38 seconds on the clock. Ryan McComey under center, hands the ball off to number five, who was brought down quickly. It looks like a ball came loose. Can't tell if it was a fumble or who it was recovered by, but number five got up without the ball. Number five is Carlos Brown. So here's the handoff. He picks up a few yards before he's hit. It looks like he runs into his own player, and that may have caused a loose ball. But I do believe Southern Arkansas recovered. It looks that looks to be that way. So it's now second and five with the ball on the 34-yard line. A minute 54 on the clock. The ball is handled back off. And again, Carlos Brown with the carry, but he's brought down to the line of scrimmage that time. Doesn't look to be any gain on the play. And it looked like the quarterback just min mishandled the snap there, Josh. If he'd have been able to get the ball the way he needed to, he probably could have handed it off, and it might have actually been a, a positive play. Yeah, it did look like there was a little bit of a fumbled snap there, but they recovered, handed the ball off, and didn't get very far with it that time. So the Blazer defense holding strong again. No big plays just yet. They've held Southern Arkansas in check for the most part. McComey under center with the man in motion. Fakes the handoff, hands the ball off to number 10, who is met quickly by Dudley Spence, who makes a great tackle at about the 30-yard line. That carry by, was by Quentin Porter. Pretty active guy so far tonight for Southern Arkansas. Yeah, in the reverse, that caught BSU off guard. They weren't expecting this. They were looking to expect him to hand it off up the middle, but then he gave it to number 10, who hit, took it to the outside and was able to pick up a couple of yards. Didn't pick up many. It brings up third down. It's third and four. Again, the ball's on the 33-yard line. It's a minute and seven left on the clock. There's an official measurement to see whether or not he did get enough yardage. Look like it could be close. Trying to decide the exact spot right now. It's a first down for Southern Arkansas. Larry Dean seems to be somewhat upset with the call. He may think it's a favorable spot, but that trickery, like you're saying, that reverse there caught VSU off, off guard a little bit. That's what this SAU offense is all about. After the new head coach came in, Bill Keeble, he wanted to change the offense around because he felt as if his offense wasn't getting enough yards per, per play. They typically run the spread offense, don't they? Yeah, they run, they run a similar def offense to VSU and Newberry. Well, VSU looking to slow things down here. Ball is handed off. And the running back is brought down in the backfield very quickly. It was, again, the running back was Chris Metcalf, and he was met by a swarm of defenders right away. Big 92, Mr. Demario Jones got into the backfield to go ahead and break that play up. As you can see right here, he gave, gave number 21. Demario Jones wasn't playing that. He made sure he got that stop for his team. Again, that swarm defense was right there, too. Demario Jones with the initial hit and tackle. And there were two or three other guys coming in quickly, so they're holding true to their, the their, their defense tonight. McCombie's in shotgun this time. He's been under center the last few times. Standing back in shotgun now. Maybe trying a different look. There's three receivers with one back, a receiver in motion. Receives a snap and hits his receiver number 21. 
who does not get anywhere. Chris Metcalf looked like he may have lost his footing and fell down. Yeah, if he was able to stay on his feet, he might have been able to make Larry Dean miss and take it up for a couple yards. But as you can see, maybe this rain is actually having an effect on this game. The turf might be a little wet, but it, it might play a bigger factor than we expected. Well, with that play, it's the end of the first quarter there. The score is now 7 to nothing BSU. Uh, it's third down 17 minutes ago. And with the change of quarters, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more exciting Blazer football. For me, it's giving the best of myself. For me, it's the professional team environment and the mutual respect that I share with my colleagues. For me, it's providing my patients with the best and safest care possible. For me, it's having the latest in healthcare technologies and the privilege of providing the best health care to America's veterans. We are the nurses of VA. VACareers.com, a career in caring. Valdosta State University's Small Business Development Center provides consulting, seminars, and research to entrepreneurs. As my business has faced new challenges, I've seen the benefits of an ongoing relationship with VSU's Small Business Development Center. They've made a huge difference. Why not add your name to the growing number of clients taking advantage of free and confidential services and take your business to the next level? pushing a button. But with e-file from the IRS, your taxes can be. It's the fastest, surest way to get your taxes behind you. So ask your tax preparer or visit us on the web. Thanks for joining us back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium where VSU leads Southern Arkansas seven to nothing. We're beginning the second quarter here. The ball is third down, 17 yards to go. Southern Arkansas is on the VSU 36-yard line with a long way to go here. McCombie receives a snap and is looking deep. Just overthrows his receiver, who's number one. Number one is Raphael Tyson. Just overthrew Tyson. With the freshman Alex Webster on the coverage there. Yeah, Alex Webster is a redshirt freshman. And uh, he did a good job on that coverage, didn't give didn't give Tyson any breathing room, so it would have been a tough completion either way. And with that incompletion, it's fourth and 17. The punting team is now out on the field, so the, the Blazer defense tray has done a great job so far. Yes, it has, and let's hope that this ASU, SAU offense or punt team doesn't pin Blazers deep down their own territory. Well, Derek Harris is back to receive the punt. Harris is very explosive, explosive and a quick guy. It's a great punt. It's kicked right into the end zone, though. So the Blazers will start out at their 20-yard line. Be pretty decent field position. Valdosta State is trying to avenge their first home opening loss since 1998. Newberry came in here and took them off guard a little bit. It was the first time they had lost a home opener since 1998. Yeah, BSU also had a, a, a lot, well, season opening loss in the year 2004. But if you remember, this 2004 is also when it went on to win the national championship after blowing the very first game of the season. Yeah, that game was on the road. It was not at home. But like you said, Trey, they've started out the season on a downturn before and turned things around quite nicely. So we'll just hope that's that's going to be a trend that we repeat this season. There's four receivers. Ronnie Nelson, the lone back in the backfield. Kellen Lewis is in shotgun mode. Got a receiver in motion here. It's Isaiah Jupiter. Lewis with the snap. He has his check down receiver in Ronnie Nelson who runs out. Nelson's showing off a, a few pretty strong stiff arms tonight so far, Trey. Yeah, and I'm surprised that they didn't go back to running Nelson on the second drive of the game, but I guess this is where they're going to eventually start slowly working it back in, and they're just trying to keep the defense honest. Well, there was no gain on the play, so it'll be second and 10. The ball's still on the 20-yard line. There's 14 minutes and 30 seconds into the – 14 minutes, 30 seconds left in the second quarter, just starting it. Kellen Lewis receives the snap. Hits number 82. That is Cody Case. Received the pass, picked up a few yards, about five yards on the play it looks. Actually four yards. That'll be third down with six yards to go. So. And, and SAU once again with a three, la three down lineman set in here in the, against this Blazer offense. Looks like they're trying to prevent the pass here. Nelson in the backfield, three, re four receivers. Looks like one of the linemen may have jumped on Southern Arkansas. 
Kellen Lewis on the move. Finds number one, who's making some moves and making it happen. This is Cedric Evans with the ball. Great run by Cedric Evans. Caught the pass. It was about an eight-yard pass, but he picked up several yards after the play. Took it up to nearly midfield. So Blazers first down, and the, the drive will continue. And this is where you love a mobile quarterback here, Josh. He's able to extend the play. As he's in the pocket, you see that he doesn't have any wide receivers over, so he just does what he has to do, extends the play, and he finds Cedric Evans, and he hits him in stride and he picks up big yardage. Good block by Ronnie Nelson there. Speaking of Ryan Nelson, he gets the handoff and he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage or so. May have picked up short yardage, but not much. The ball's right at midfield. It's 13 minutes and 24 seconds on the clock. Gain of two on the play, so it's second down with eight yards to go. The ball is on the 50 yard line. And it looks like the Blazers are trying to go with the hurry up offense here, Josh, to try to throw this SAU defense off guard. Well, they stay with four receivers and one back. Seems to have been working pretty well so far. Lewis with the snap. He hits again Cedric Evans, who is not brought down easily. Evans is a fighter, it looks like. Gets it out to about the 50, or excuse me, about a seven yard gain there. Cedric, Cedric Evans is 5'10, 192 pounds, and he just picked that little defensive back up and carried him on his back for a couple of yards there to let you know, hey boy, this is a man's game. I'm going to take these yards if I want to. Get your weight up. Took it out to about the 43 yard line. It's now third and one to go with the ball on the 43. Third down, ball is handed off. Blazers going to get enough right there for a first down. Lewis with the keeper. Blazers. It's a first down for the Blazers. All right, well, the Blazers use a three running back system, which we saw some of in the first quarter on that last play. Another, another successful use of that, that formation. And now I have one running back with four receivers, something we're seeing more of. Number 25, Michael Brown's the back. He's in motion. Switch sides. He's now on Kellen Lewis's left side. Lewis hands the ball off to Michael Brown, who finds a hole up the middle and has a decent gain. Picks up nearly probably about eight yards on that play. And this is what this multiple style of offense in different formations does. Josh, he just throws the defense off. I mean, one minute you have four wide receivers out here on the field. And as you can see, he hands the ball off to Michael Brown, who cuts up in the middle, gives a couple yards until he's brought down by number 58, who is Maurice Thornton, who actually had a pretty big game last week with, I think, nine, with nine tackles. That was a good run by Michael Brown. Have three receivers and two backs now. It's like Gabe Mould, the fullbacks back there. Kellen Lewis is having to scramble. He's got a lot of pressure. He's making things happen. Nearly throws an interception, but it is received by number nine, Owen Dixon. That was a great catch there. He bobbled it. Everybody was worried it was going to be picked off, but he brought it in. And that's what you like to see from your wide receivers. He was able to snatch the ball from the defensive back and make something out of nothing. But this is one thing that's real scary about a mobile quarterback. They tend to run around a lot to try to extend the play when sometimes they could probably just throw it away. But then when they are able to make the big plays, like you see right here, it, it turns out marvelous. Without that mobility, that play would not be where it is. The ball is faked. Kellen Lewis keeps it himself, trying to get to the outside. He has four people closing in on him. Takes a little bit of a hit, but he goes down at the 20-yard line. The Blazers were running off of a first down right there with that last play that we saw. They did pick up the first down. So that was a pretty decent run there by Kellen Lewis. We now have 10 minutes and 53 seconds left in the second quarter. Again, the Blazers are up 7 to nothing. And once again, they're doing this hurry-up offense, trying to make sure they get this quick score here and continues to keep this defense off balance and to make sure they don't have a chance to try to sub anybody in to get any fresh players out there on the field. We're seeing Derek Harris move around in the backfield. Gabe Moulds on the left side of the line, trying to provide a little extra protection. The referees are whistling something dead. VSU took us, called a timeout. And with that timeout, we're going to go to one more quick break. We'll be right back with more Blazer action after these few messages. I'm Jessica Mendoza, U.S. Olympic gold and silver medalist. I never take my eyesight for granted. Neither should you. Doesn't matter how old you are, you could be losing your vision to glaucoma without knowing it. Take care of your sight. Schedule regular eye exams for yourself and those you love. Call 1-800-437-2423 and go to ahaf.org for free information and publications from National Glaucoma Research. And we are back from those few messages and returning to the action on the field. 
where VSU leads Southern Arkansas 7 to nothing. There are 10 minutes and 27 seconds left in the second quarter. The Blazers have the ball on the 20-yard line. Killen Lewis moving, looking for a receiver downfield. He drops the ball and has to fall on it. So there's going to be a loss of about a yard or two on the play. The good thing is he was able to keep his awareness up and he noticed was able to fall on the ball so we could keep possession and at least hopefully be able to get a field goal out of this if we can't get the touchdown. Yeah, the way he was running the ball just then, he was carrying it in one hand. It's, it's kind of a it's a coach's worst nightmare to see a guy do that, but you can't say much about Kellen Lewis, the way he's been playing. But he does lose a couple yards on that play with that drop ball. It's now third and 11, ball on the 26. So the Blazers lose about six yards on the play. Have four receivers, one running back who's Derek Harris. Lewis with the snap, looking downfield. Again, under pressure. Breaks a tackle. Looks like he's picking up some yards. There's a flag on the play. Lewis showing off his legs. Takes it down to about the seven-yard line. But, again, there's some cotton on the field there, Trey. It might be coming back like it might have been an illegal block on the one of the offensive linemen there, Josh. Typically, a block or a holding is something you see, uh, you see when a quarterback does something like that. See if we can see it here. Lewis looking downfield. Nobody's open. Has three. Three pressure, defensive pressures. It was a face mask on the play, which gave us a yardage, Josh. So it wasn't on the blockers or on VSU. It was actually on SAU with the face mask on Kellen Lewis there. So a good break there for VSU. Going to add some yardage to the end of that play. So VSU is in a very good scoring position right now. Looks like the ball is being placed on about the three-yard line. So there's nine minutes and 24 seconds left in the second quarter. And I look for this Blazer offense to pick up right where they did on the first quarter, Josh. So go ahead and get this score and try to put it up 14 to nothing here with nine minutes and 20 sec 24 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Yeah, I think the Blazers would like to go ahead and get some points on the board early and not feel pressure to do so later. Kellen Lewis with the snap, hands the ball off. To, oh, he keep, keeps it himself and walks it in. He faked everybody in the house, including myself. He faked the handoff to Derek Harris. He did a good job of doing a fake right there. And Kellen Lewis, as you can tell, ran around the corner right here. Looks like he faked the cameraman a little bit too. Walks right in untouched. That was a great play call right there. And that's a very well executed play from the Blazers here, Josh. And now let's see if they're going to be able to tack on the extra point here. Daniel Anderson's out for the kick. Russ Callaway will be the holder. The snap is off. Kick is up and good. So with nine minutes and 11 seconds left in the second quarter, the score is now 14 to nothing. VSU leads Southern Arkansas. I'm pretty ready sure to there's kick a lot of Blazer fans at home now, Josh, wishing they actually had a came out and supported these Blazers. I mean, at first we thought it was probably going to be a little bit of rain going on here, but as you can see, the rain's cleared out. It turned out to be a beautiful night, and the few fans who are here are pumped about Blazer football, and the Blazers have not disappointed thus far. Well, Blazer Nation did a pretty good job of showing up regardless of the weather. Don't forget to watch VSU TV for the latest local, state, and national news on VSU TV News, airing live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or catch the rebroadcast at 5.30, 8, and 10.30 p.m. But yeah, Trey, it's not a huge showing tonight because of the weather, but it turned out to be a pretty night. It's, it's not nearly as humid as the last game. It, it's actually a pretty, pretty easy to enjoy game. I see there's a little bit of drizzle, but other than that, it's it's really not that bad. And besides maybe a couple of slips here and there, it hasn't really affected the game that much. So, I mean, this, this still can go either way. Remember, it's still early in the game. Southern Arkansas might be trying to hold a little bit back with the second half. You never know. Or maybe the Blazers start struggling, and it turns into completely something else. I mean, we've seen games where teams have made big turnarounds after coming out of the halftime, after being uh, getting a couple of pep talks from the coaches. That's true. The kicking team's on the field. Quickly, if you don't mind, Trey, summarize kind of what you're seeing out of the VSU offense so far. So far, I'm seeing the VSU offense doing what they should do, just taking what the defense gives them, not get greedy, and just pick your spots and take the opportunities that are given to you. They're yeah. giving up all the short yardage plays. Take those plays, turn them into points, and VSU's been doing it all night. Here comes the kickoff. Daniel Anderson with the boot. Kicks it down to about the six-yard line. It's being brought back upfield. The returner gets out to about the 25-yard line where he's brought down. LaMarcus Howard was the returner. He's a cornerback for the Mule Riders. Haven't seen a ton of him so far tonight, but he returned. He did a pretty good job of returning that punt. Oh, excuse me, kickoff. 
as both teams take the field getting set for the for the snap here. VSU's back on defense, and they've been pretty solid on defense here all night, Josh. If, have you seen what you expect to see from this Blazer defense? Trey, I've been impressed. The secondary has really shown up tonight. There hasn't been a whole lot of deep passes, but the couple that have been there have been knocked down quickly. The ball is handed off to number 21, who gets knocked out of bounds. That was Chris Metcalf. May have gained a yard on the play, maybe maybe a couple, but not much. It was shut down pretty quickly. Once again, the Blazers are getting off those blockers and in the pursuit of the, 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 the carry of the ball there, trying to make sure that he doesn't get many yards out of that. There's a, there was also a flag, there's a flag on the play, on the play. There. It was a personal foul against VSU. It like it might have been a late hit out of bounds is why the, the reason why they called it, Josh. That's most likely what it was. I didn't see it on the field at the time, but it's most likely what it was. So that'll be tacking on yardage for Southern Arkansas, who now gets a very favorable spot. The ball's brought out to about the 44-yard line, so they're approaching midfield. The VSU has been in this spot before when they gave up a big penalty earlier, but the defense was able to hold on and get a three and out and give the offense back the ball. That's true. They've seen this before, VSU has. The ball is handed off. The running back gets nowhere. I think he actually may lose a yard on the play. Another one of the key things for this Blazer defense tonight was to come in here and stop the run and to make sure they stop the deep ball. And thus far, they have done just that. I'm very, like you said, I'm very impressed with the front, the front four of the Blazer defense as well as the secondary. We still have a very young secondary with the leader Carlos Anderson in the backfield. But if the Blazers can continue to keep this up throughout the rest of the season, it'll be a very good matchup between them and whoever comes out of the other side of the GSC this year. I think VSU learned a lot from that first game against Newberry. That carry was by number 21, Chris Metcalf again. McCombie's in shotgun, got a reason. Has a runner in motion. Steps back, looks downfield. Has all the time in the world, but he scrambles to his right. He's being pursued by number 95, and he has to throw it away. Must have been a really good job on the secondary just then, because McCombie had all the time in the world to try and find a receiver, and evidently no one was open. The pocket was clean from the entire time. I mean, he, could, he stood back there for what seemed like forever, looking down the field, but yet his receivers weren't able to get open, which is, like I said, the cornerbacks with VSU's defense are looking a whole lot better than they did against Newberry. And we're going to need them to continue to play at such a high level if we plan to make a run for the championship. Well, the pressure on McCombie was applied by Tyler Josie. He's a defensive tackle. He's a sophomore. He was in pursuit once McCombie decided to roll to his right and really helped cause that ball that was thrown away. There's eight minutes left in the quarter. McCombie receives a snap. Finds a receiver pretty quickly. He's taking the ball down midfield. Gets out to about the 50. It was Quentin Porter had the reception. Takes the ball down. The ball is going to be spotted at the 50-yard line. And it looks like the play they've really been trying to set up all night here, Josh. The quick screen where they hit the man out in the flat, and then he tries to run behind his blocks. But the thing is, the VSU defense is blowing that play up almost every time. That was a big hit right there by number 42. Well, fortunately for VSU, that brings up fourth down. So the punt team's on the field. Derek Harris is back. Preparing to return the punt. VSU's done a very good job on defense tonight, Trey. They've, I believe this is the third or fourth punt by Southern Arkansas, almost a hand on it. Uh, VSU's not going to have very good field position because of this. The ball is down, it looks like, at the four-yard line. Harris let that one go, anticipating it going into the end zone. It didn't quite make it. But if this VSU offense can continue to click on all cylinders like it has been doing all night, Josh, this shouldn't be a problem. I mean. If they can take it from coast to coast like they just did a second ago, I'd see this Blazer defense offense getting another score here before the half over. Yeah, my confidence in the Blazer offense is definitely growing. I think this this long field is just going to give them a chance to get a, get a better rhythm together. The Blazers are looking very well in their GSC opener. Since 2000, VSU has won 68 games in this nine-year span. That tops the conference. So they've had a good nine-year run here in the GSC, hoping to continue it tonight here against Southern Arkansas. Between these two teams, there's been 13 games played. G uh, VSU won has won 10 of them, including the last nine. Kellen Lewis with the handoff to David Arnold, who's met right at the line of scrimmage but gains a few yards. There's a flag on the play. Can't tell exactly yet what it may be on. It looked like it might have been a little holding down there on the offensive line there, Josh. I hope that's not the case. That would back VSU up really close to the goal line. Call start. Ball start on the defense. So VSU's field position is going to be very unfavorable for the Blazers. But Trey, you know, with the series, as I just mentioned, 10 and 3 in VSU's favor, do you feel that, uh, that there might be some kind of mental edge 
here against Southern Arkansas? I mean, being 10-3. and three. I mean, if anything, if I was Southern Arkansas, the only thing that would be in the back of my mind is I've came or if I've played against this team for the past 10 years and for the nine that I've played them, I've lost. Tonight, i got to come in here and try to make any play that I possibly can to put my team in a position to win this thing so we can actually try to get back in that stat column and try to <laughs> close that gap between that win and loss column between us two. Kellen Lewis receives a snap. Again, he's in the end zone. Hits Gerald Ford in the middle of the field. Ford picks up good yardage there. He's brought down at about the 13-yard line, very close to the first down. There are six minutes and 38 seconds left in the second quarter. The game seems to be going by very quickly, Trey. A lot of this offense has been on the ground, keeping the ball, keeping the clock running. So It's mainly because VSU is running that hurry-up offense, which we've seen a lot in practice, which looks very smooth. And as you can see, it's working very well tonight here in this nice game. And VSU runs a lot of hurry-up offenses in practice. We noticed that. Again, the ball is handed off to David Arnold, number 10. Picks up a few yards on the play. He's going to have enough for a first down, I believe. The ball gets out to about the 16-yard line. Yep, the ball's at the 16-yard line. It's a first down for the Blazers. I know if I want to try to pick up the short yardage, Josh, all I got to say is give me number 10, put him behind the quarterback and let him do his thing between the tackles and run up the middle of the field to try to give me the first down. Well, Arnold is a tough guy to bring down. He's had several good runs already tonight. Against Newberry, he had a lot of good yardage also, a lot of crucial yardage. So, seen a lot of good things out of that guy. He's only a sophomore again, so that's good news for VSU. Kellen Lewis receives the snap, pitches it out to Arnold. Arnold runs a little bit of a sweep and gets it up to about the 19-yard line. He was hit pretty early, but he seemed to carry a few guys with him there. That's the good thing about having a whole lot of running backs at your disposal here, disposal here Josh, because as you can see, they keep going from Ronnie Nelson to Michael Brown to David Arnold. I mean, when you have so many weapons, you have enough guys to keep them fresh so that as the game goes on, you're eventually going to wear the defensive down to where the running backs will still be pretty good so they can make the big plays here at the end of the game. Well, there's a player down on the field for Southern Arkansas. He's being tended to by the trainers right now. Number 90, Ryan. Uh, Blaze FM 90.9 on your radio dial is back on the air. That means that Skip Gildersleeve has returned with, lest we forget, a celebration of college radio's past. Every Sunday night at 9 p.m. on WVVS. So, Josh, have you seen everything you expect to see from this VSU defense and offense after that loss to Newberry? Honestly, I'm seeing a lot of good things here, Trey. I don't know if it has anything to do with, with adjustments they've made or if the fact it's just a different defense and it's a lot of a lot smaller guys, but issue has been very successful really in every aspect of their offense, whether it be running or passing. It's been a promising showing for the Blazers here tonight. We've got four receivers, Lewis looking downfield. He's pressured, he's on the run. He's scrambling himself. He takes the ball up to about the 28 yard line. Another great scramble by Kellen Lewis. Trey, he's so deadly with his arm and his legs. Yes, Josh, if you're gonna, the one thing you have to do, if you have a mobile quarterback in the pocket, you gotta make sure you contain him. But the thing is, he sees the pressure coming from both sides and one guy, for some reason, jumps into the air to try to, I guess, block the pass. But Lewis made the heads up play, kept the ball in his hand, saw what the defense was doing, saw the open field and made the run and picked up a few yards for the Blazers. Yeah, that was a great run there. Picked up the first down for the Blazers, so it's first and 10. Lewis fakes the handoff. He's looking downfield. Again, he's scrambling. Oh, he throws an interception. His arm was hit as he was letting go of the ball. And the Southern Arkansas defender picked it right up and took it into the end zone. That was a very unfortunate play there. It looks as, as Kellen Lewis was bringing his arm forward, it was hit and went right into the hands of a defender, as we can see here. Again, fakes the handoff to Michael Brown. Rolls to his left as he feels the pressure. And right here, as he's getting ready to throw, the ball is hit when it's still back, so it is considered a fumble and an interception. Number four, Trent Stevenson is a cornerback. He's the one that picked it up and took it all the way back. So if this extra point is put through the uprights, it'll now be 14 to seven. And it is, the, the, the extra point is good, so with four minutes and 41 seconds left in the first half, VSU leads 14 to seven. And that turnover right there just put SAU right back in this game. Like I said, it was plenty of time left on the clock. Anything is possible. And as you can see there with the unfortunate pass that got picked off and took back for six, 
SAU, SAU is now in striking distance and can go into the halftime with a little confidence to come back in the second half. Well, VSU will be getting the ball back real quickly. And with four minutes and 41 seconds left on the clock, they may be able to milk as much time as they can and, and limit the time left for uh, Southern Arkansas to have the ball before the, before the half. So the Blazers have some making up to do for that one, I'm sure. It was just one bad play on behalf of the offense. It was actually really a good play on behalf of the defense. There was nothing Kellen Lewis could really do about that. He may have could have he maybe could have sat in the pocket a little longer. Do you think he got a little anxious to run? I'm just like I said, he's just taking what he's seeing. He seen a lot of um, space out on the outside, so he just went ahead and took it to the outside to try to see if he can make anything happen. Only thing is, the pressure got to him from behind. He didn't see the guy, so he just made the heads up play and went for the arm instead of trying to go for the tackle. He went for the fumble and was fortunate enough to get it and. Got his team six points by knocking right into the hand of his cornerback. Well, this will only be the second kickoff return tonight for the Blazers, which is a good thing. They received the opening kickoff, and now, now that Southern Arkansas is on the board, they'll receive the second one. Ronnie Nelson and Derek Harris are going to be the two returners in the backfield. Both are explosive runners, very agile, very quick and nimble, able to break tackles and get around people. So maybe they can, uh, with a reception, set up VSU with strong field position to start up another good drive. Once again, we're having a whole lot of running backs keeps your guys fresh and they can come in and make plays on special teams as well as making plays for the offense. Well, No Cuevas is the kicker for the Mule Riders. He's setting up the ball and he kicks the ball off. Not a very far kick. The Blazers are going to have good field position as long as they hold on to the ball. Receiving it about the 20. Ronnie Nelson's the one who caught it and running it up. Blazers are going to be starting out at about the 40 yard line. That was great, great return there by Ronnie Nelson. About a 20 yard return. So the Blazers are going to have good field position to start this next drive. As you see in the replay, Nelson brings the ball up in the middle of the field. He's met at about the 35 yard line and fights his way to about the 40 or 41. That's where the ball is marked, it's at the 41 yard line. So there are four minutes and 34 seconds left in the first half. The Blazers are gonna be starting at the 41 yard line at first and 10, trying to make something happen here before the half. There's four receivers with one back. The back is Derek Harris. Kellen Lewis is a shotgun. Hands the ball off to Harris, there's a flag on the play. Harris breaks loose, he's up the middle of the field too. Huge gain there for Harris, gets to a down to the Southern Arkansas 30 yard line. Unfortunately, there's a flag on the play. Hopefully the ball won't be coming back. We, we don't know who the flag's on just yet. But as you can see, Kellen Lewis hands the ball off to number two, Derek Harris, who sees plenty of space up the middle of the field. He just does what any running back should do, make the play for his team and picks up big yards. But the sad thing is it's gonna come back. Yep, it is coming back. Not sure what the penalty is just yet. But that was a big run there by Harris. Unfortunately, didn't really amount to anything just yet. It's an illegal procedure on the offense. So the ball was just a five yard penalty. The ball is gonna be brought back to about the 36 yard line. So it's now second and 15 with the ball in the 36. Four minutes and 25 seconds left in the half. Blazers leading 14 to seven. Again, four receivers, looks like the same formation Blazers just used, Derek Harris in the backfield. Lewis with the snap looking deep. Finds his receiver, Cody Case, who makes a few good moves and is brought down pretty hard by the mule rider defender. But he gets out to about the 47 yard line. That was a good reception there, Trey. That's one of the main things that problems that we have with the VSU offense. Just like they have the ups and ups, they have their downs. And right here they have one of the ups where number 82 was able to catch the ball, make a couple men miss and gain a couple more yards. And he tried to get outside and hopefully he had a couple blockers, but that wasn't the case there, Josh. Well, same same setup here, Derek here. Uh, Ronnie Nelson in the backfield now with four receivers. Lewis hands the ball off to Nelson. Picks up a few yards on the play, crosses midfield, gets it down to about the 48 yard line. So VSU crosses back over into Southern Arkansas territory, so they're putting together another drive here. Yeah, they're slowly moving the ball on this SAU defense, and it looks like the defense might be getting a little tired here. Maybe they didn't expect to see the style of running and passing from VSU tonight, Josh. Well, the Blazers picked up the first down with that carry, so the ball is put at the 49-yard line. It's first and 10 with three minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. So the Blazers are eating up a lot of the clock here with this running game. 
Boos receives a snap, hands it off to Nelson again. Nelson breaks to the outside, runs, runs up and gets the ball all the way to the 40-yard line. Another great run by Ryan Nelson, a pickup of about nine or 10 yards. It's gonna be close to a first down. For a second there, Josh, I thought my eyes were deceiving me. And as you can see right here, Lewis hands it off to Ronnie Nelson. And Ronnie Nelson isn't really known to be a power back, but as you can see, he has a couple defenders coming up to him. He just splits both defenders and goes for a couple more yards there. I thought David Arnold was out there running that ball then, Josh. <laughs> that was a powerful move by the nimble back. He typically makes a miss, but that time he took it straight on and picked up a few extra yards. Nelson still in the backfield with four receivers. Kellen Lewis receives a snap, and again it's to Nelson. Nelson running powerfully again. Trey gets it down to almost the 30-yard line, to about the 31, 32-yard line. He was grabbed, and he picked up a few more yards there. So, so Nelson's adding a whole new element to, to his game. That run gets a first down for the Blazers. Nelson has the ball right here running up the middle, and as you can see, dragging a couple of SAU defenders right along with him. It looks like he's been working on those leg muscles in practice and in the weight room up here, Josh. Well, Kellen Lewis is looking to pass on this play. Hits number 16, Isaiah Jupiter who was brought down at about the 20-yard line, so a good gain there. And that's what you like to see about your quarterback. Kellen Lewis, even though he might have threw the ball away in touch, but he got the force to fumble, he's able to come back in here, still keep his confidence level up, and take his team down the field and try to put him in position to get a score before the half is over. Well, it's another first down for the Blazers. And Trey, aside from penalties, the VSU Blazers, it looks like are really doing what they, whatever they want to do on the offensive side of the ball right now. VSU TV will present Vote 2009, a local political forum on Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m. That's Vote 2009 this Tuesday night on cable channel 20 VSU TV. So, Trey, what are we seeing out of the VSU offense so far? What, what are they doing? What's their scheme? It looks like that week off gave the Blazers plenty of time to get with their quarterback and their wide receivers and running backs and the entire offensive play, all the offensive players, Josh, and they're putting together some pretty impressive drives there. All the plays seem to be going off without a hitch, and the team is doing what we expect them to do this entire time, even in the very first game. They're finding the open men, they're getting the yardage, and they're fighting for every yard, and that's what we expect from them. Well, Kellen Lewis's arm has been showing off tonight. He's made several good passes. He's getting the ball there quickly on a zip right where it needs to be. So I'm very impressed. Against Newberry, we saw some good passing, but we saw his, his legs a lot, a lot of scrambling because of the pressure. But uh, he's, he's thrown a lot of good passes so far tonight, so seems to be firing on all, cil on all cylinders. It's probably because the SAU is playing a little more zone than they are actually blitzing out the quarterback. You can see they have three down linemen, and that's not really going to give you much pressure on the quarterback, especially not a quarterback like Kellen Lewis. Well, Michael Brown's the back. He receives the handoff. He's met at the line of scrimmage and only picks up about two yards after that. But like you said, Trey, we're seeing a lot of different running backs here tonight. I know we've seen Ronnie Nelson, Michael Brown, David Arnold, and Derek Harris, all four of those guys. So that's probably really wearing down the defense, especially the defensive line, and the running backs are able to stay fresh. That might come up to be a, a theme later in the game. The VSU offense is still fresh, and the Southern Arkansas defense is worn out. Kellen Lewis is looking to pass. Finds Cedric Jones, who is hit immediately as he makes the catch but he holds on to the pass and gets the Blazers down to about the six yard line. And that's what you like to see from your veteran wide receiver right there, making a big play in the clutch. He was hit immediately after he caught the ball, but he was able to hold on to it. As you can see here, Kellen Lewis looking, looking, looking. Oh, I have a man right there. I call him Cedric Evans. I mean, Cedric Jones, sorry there. Mr. Jones. That's what they call him. Well, that's another first down for the Blazers. Kellen Lewis hands the ball off to Michael Brown. Brown really doesn't get anywhere. Maybe a yard, actually may have lost a yard. So not much of a productive run right there, unfortunately, for Michael Brown. There's only a minute and 15 seconds left in the half. So VSU's done a great job of milking the clock on this possession. This running game is really working in their favor. Kellen Lewis steps back, finds Cedric Jones again, down to about the four-yard line. Cedric Jones is fighting away. He's brought down by two defenders of the Mule Riders. That was another great catch. Actually, with that catch, Trey, I believe he just moved up another place in the receptions of VSU yardage. He, he probably did. Uh, we'll have to check the stats in a couple seconds here, Josh. But as you can see, he, he's watching his quarterback all the way. He makes the big catch, and he tries to fight for a couple more yards there. But he was tackled by a couple of SAU defenders to make sure he didn't get into the end zone before the half was out. Well, there's 43 seconds on the clock. It's third down with four to go, and the ball's on the four-yard line. So the Blazers are really threatening here to put another one in and get a, build a strong lead before the half. 
VSU Theater and Dance present Almost Maine. The play will be performed in the lab theater of the VSU Fine Art Building. VSU students are free with presentation of valid VSU IDs. Call 333-5973 for more information. And please note, Almost Maine does contain adult themes. All right, Trace, what do you think on this next play? Do you think VSU is going to be looking to run or pass the ball? I'm, I'm saying they'll probably go ahead and try to run it up the middle, try to get the defense off, off guard a little bit and spread the defense out by probably bringing out at least three wide receivers and then probably having a couple of scat backs in there. Or if not, they can bring the big bruise in, David Arnold, and let them go ahead and try to take it up the middle and see what they can get. They're on the four-yard line, so, I mean, anything is possible. Well, either way, I'm sure VSU will be effective. They have been all night with the run and the pass. I kind of agree with you, man. Uh, this close to the end zone, I can see the ball being handed off and maybe even going right up the middle with it as successful as they've been. Maybe look for big number 10, David Arnold. Can't tell if he's on the field just yet, but if he is, he is. Number 10, David Arnold on the backfield. I'd be looking for him to have the reception here. I'm also interested to see what type of formation SAU brings out. I'd like to have going to still stick with that three down lineman and four linebackers maybe. Well, the ball is snapped. It's fake to David Arnold. Kellen Lewis is scrambling, looking to pass. Throws the ball right at Cedric Jones, but couldn't make it. If they don't make it, if they don't get it in on the end zone here, it's now fourth and four. Do you think they're going to go for the field goal or for the end zone? Looks I mean, like I say the field goal is probably the safest thing to do. At least this gives you a couple points before you go into the half, and it kind of keeps your morale up. I mean, with 36 seconds and 36 seconds left on the clock, I mean, the best thing to do is just go ahead, get the points, kick the ball off, and go into halftime feeling good about yourself. Well, I think you and Coach Dean are on the same page because Daniel Anderson's back to try and add three points to the Blazers. And it looks like he... He did successfully. So the Blazers now have a 17 to seven lead. There are 32 seconds left in the first half. And the Blazers are getting ready to kick the ball off and hopefully shut the Mule Riders down right before they go into the half. Well, one of the main things I've noticed one of the main things I noticed by watching this game, Josh, is that the Mule Riders have been known to have a 4-2 defense style, which adds an extra cornerback to the backfield to try to break up the passing game. But as I continuously watch this game, I noticed that they just keep going with three down linemen. Why do you think that is, Josh? I, I don't know, Trey. I mean, honestly, with the way the run game is being established tonight, I would think they'd bring more linemen up also. I mean, trying to, trying to stop that running game. But I guess they just respect the all-around offensive capabilities of VSU. What do you think about it, Trey? I feel as if they're just trying to make sure that they don't give up the big play either way to go, just like you said. They're just trying to keep the running backs in front of them, but I feel as if they still should be able to go back to at least a 4-3 so they can have a couple more men down in the box and try to make sure that they stuff up the middle so those little guys won't be able to make the big runs. And VSU's been exploiting that all night. I mean, with three down linemen, you're not going to get much pressure on the quarterback. So as you've seen, Kellen Lewis is going to be able to run wild all night, find his men open downfield, make the big plays, and it's – hurting them in the long run, as you can see, with the score already being 17-7, to 7, but it's still not over. Well, VSU's offense is looking very well-rounded tonight, whether it be with the run game, pass game, and then Kellen Lewis himself being able to make plays happen. I think the Mule Riders are really just at a standstill and having to prevent any further damage. They're just, they have to respect the VSU offense. Well, Daniel Anderson sets the ball up, ready to kick off. There are 32 seconds left in the half. So VSU is going to try and shut this thing down here quickly and take it into the halftime with a 10-point lead. Here comes Anderson's kickoff. It's a bit of a squib kick, kicked right up the middle. It's fielded about the 30-yard line, and the runner is brought down right there. That was Carlos Brown. Carlos Brown, yeah, the fullback. He was brought down at about the 34-yard line. So a decent return. Not much of one, though. 27 seconds left in the half. So the Blazers have a little little bit of time left on the clock. They're probably going to play. What kind of defense do you think they'll be playing right here? I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll probably be a prevent. It depends on what type of formation they see SAU come out in. I mean, if they have a lot of wide receivers out on the field, they're going to try to make sure they prevent the pass. But as you can see, it looks like they're just going to try to go ahead and go in and take it on in halftime with what they have already and not be greedy. Yep, and with that, Ryan McComan kneels the ball. So he's letting the clock run out. I think the Mule Riders are going to go back, regroup, and try and get a new game plan to come out here and change things around. So going into halftime, it's 17-7 to VSU Blazers. They've done a great job in the first half. The offense has been firing on all cylinders. And the defense has been what's been the story of the game. So stick around, folks. We'll be back after halftime, and we'll see more of Blazer, exciting Blazer football.
here on VSU Channel 20. Millions of Americans suffer from poverty, but passionate people like you can do something about it. Join VISTA. You can teach teens how to mentor children at risk, recruit volunteers to feed the hungry, or help homeless veterans find shelter and employment. AmeriCorps VISTA has more than 6,500 opportunities for you to help fight poverty. Go to VISTA.gov or call 800-942-2677. Another adventure with Savings Man. Oh dear, I can't afford that. Charge it. You can pay it off later. Not so fast, credit card guy. Savings Man. Don't let him entice you, ma'am. Credit card guy can lead you to big trouble. You need a savings plan. You're right, Savings Man. Get this ballpark estimate worksheet at choosetosave.org. It will help you get started. Gee, thanks, Savings Man. No, thank you. So visit choosetosave.org and get your ballpark estimate today. My father spent his last teenage birthday in a rain of fire. I will not die here, he said to himself. Fifty years later, he whispered the same thing to me from the hospital bed. Hospice provides the end-of-life care you and your loved ones want and need. It's available to everyone. With the help of the people at our local hospice, he got his wish. And so do we. Hospice care. Comfort and compassion when it's needed most. Welcome back here to Baysmore Hyder Stadium where we're about to begin the second half of this exciting game. Right now VSU is up 17-7 to to start the second half. We saw a lot of good things from the Valdosta State offense and defense in the first half. What do you expect in the second half here, Trey? I expect Kellen Lewis to come out on fire just like he did at the beginning of the game. I mean, he's so far he's 19 for 22 on passing with one interception, 141 yards. He's rushed seven times, picked up 35 yards on those rushes. Also has two touchdowns. One was a miss out, though, but it worked out in his favor. And, I mean, this VSU offense, just like you said, is firing on all cylinders. I don't see this SAU defense slowing down at all tonight. Well, in the, to start the second half, Southern Arkansas will be receiving the ball. They, they won the coin toss and deferred to VSU, so VSU will be kicking off to the eastward side of the end zone. Southern Arkansas will be taking possession of the ball. Another important thing to remember is that Southern Arkansas only has three yards of total offense, which can't be good. All right, they received the ball at about the seven-yard line. Good kick from Daniel Anderson. It is brought back to about the 24-yard line where he is stopped and it starts moving backwards. Howard is the return man for uh, Southern Arkansas. It's a decent return. LaMarcus Howard, he's a cornerback. As you can see here on the replay, Howard's just doing what he needs to do, try to follow his blockers, but he was met by number 22 on the Blazer defense, then wrapped up by number 21 and number 31. 22 was Marcel Horn with the arm tackle. Didn't quite bring him down, but slowed him down enough to allow the other two tacklers to get in there and make something happen. Freshman Ryan Smith was off in there also. So. The field position's pretty good for Southern Arkansas. Going we'll to be starting on the 25-yard line, first and 10. Ryan McComey receives the snap, does an arm fake. Finds his receiver, number nine, who was met immediately by Carlos Anderson, and number 32, Larry Dean. That was Rodney Brown, the wide receiver. He's also a freshman. He's just standing there looking at his wide receiver, trying to give him an outlet so he can get the ball out the backfield. As you can see, McComb does the pump fake to try to keep the safeties honest, and then he finds his man sitting right there in the hole, and he hits him. He, was, he had to jump up to get the ball, but, hey, he, he made the catch, came down with it, and he picked up the first down for his team. The throw was a little high, but like you said, that was a good grab there by the receiver, Rodney Brown. We have four receivers, one running back. McComey hits the down receiver, grabs the ball, and is met immediately by Larry Dean. A very slight gain, if any, maybe only a yard or two on that one. Larry Dean closed in very quickly there, Trey. So the only thing about that pass, it was a little behind his wide receiver. If he'd actually put the ball right in front of his receivers, as you can see here, he throws it to him and he tries to set up the screen, but he hits a little behind him, so he has to take a couple steps back before he can start moving forward. And that just gave the Blazers a little time to get there to make the play. Well, the receiver was Travaris Brown. And he was met by number 50, Kier Moore, number 32, Larry Dean. Kier Moore's that big defensive end, but he's got some good speed. He came from all the way from the right side of the field to the left side of the field to get to the receiver. And that's how you like to see your defensive players play, Josh. Full motor, full speed ahead, sideline to sideline. Again with four receivers, one in motion. McComb steps back, looking down the middle of the field. Again, Rodney Brown with the reception, takes it out to about the 51, 52-yard line. 
where he is met by a swarm of Valdosta State defenders. So swarm defense in effect, unfortunately, he did pick up good yardage on that play. Once again, McComb finding his outlet receiver. As you can see, the pressure coming right up the middle, so he has to get the ball away quickly. And he finds number nine, Rodney Brown, right over the middle, who catches the ball and almost fell, but he was able to maintain his balance and run up for a couple more yards, give his team another first down. It looked like uh, Alex Webster and Matt Pierce were both in on the tackle. Carlos Anderson as well. They're setting back up. We're a minute and a half into the third quarter here. McComey in the pocket, hits his check down receiver number five, the fullback, who spins off and makes him some nice plays. Gets it down to about the 40-yard line. Number five was Carlos Brown. He's a fullback. Now see, this is what I was talking about on the other play. He hit his wide receiver in front. So as you see, look, watch he drops back. He looks over into the flats. He sees his fullback, Carlos Brown, and he, hits, he throws the ball in front of him. So he has a chance to get the ball run upfield and try to make the play instead of taking a couple steps back because he threw it behind him and has to regain his balance to try to turn it up a positive yardage. Well, Larry Dean will be given at least half the credit for that tackle as he was in on it. Got there pretty quickly. I noticed Demario Jones just almost made that tackle, but the guy got right by him, Carlos Brown did. Here comes McComey with the snap. It is swatted away immediately. Looks like that was swatted by number 51, Tommy Duhart. The pit transfer coming in and making a big play for the Blazer defense. That was a great play there by Duhart. Busted through the line and just got his hand up there and interrupted the pass. Duhart showed off a little agility and speed right there, getting over in front of McComey's vision. Looked like that was just straight out power to me, Josh. Like he hit, his, hit the offensive lineman with a quick bull rush to get in the backfield to disrupt that. Well, it's now 12 minutes and 31 seconds left in the third quarter. It is third down with one yard to go. The ball on the 40. Probably going to see some kind of handoff or quarterback dive, which is what we see. VSU may have stopped him, Trey. If they got it, it won't be by much. That was a good defensive stand right there. And that's what you like to see from your, your people up front, Josh. Getting low, trying to make sure that the offensive line doesn't get a push so they can prevent that conversion and give the ball back to their offense so hopefully they can just pick up where they left off and get some more points on the board. I, uh, no yards were gained on that, so it's now fourth down. Looking to see what the deep, what the scheme is now. It looks like the Mule Riders are going to be going for it. Definitely short yardage the game, but this VSU defense hasn't been given much breathing room. If they don't actually go for it, it could be one of those scenarios where they actually get back in to try to draw the defense off sides to try to get an easy first down. But then again, they might actually go for it. But I can tell you one thing, Josh, if they go for this and then they don't convert, then it's going to just shift that momentum even more into the favor of the Blazers. And if they do convert, it might take some of that win out of the Blazers' sale and put SSU on the run that they need to be on to try to get right back in this game, even though they're still in it because it's very close and there's still plenty of time left. It would also give VSU very good field position if they don't – if they don't move the ball, they'll be starting at about the 40-yard line, which seeing what we saw in the first half, Kellen Lewis and company could do a lot with that. So they are going for it. Blazer Nation is on their feet. The crowd has stayed all night. The rain has held off, so it's been a beautiful night, Trey. Had a good crowd here considering the weather earlier. Here we go. Looks like they might be handing the ball off to their big fullback. We can't tell what they're going to do just yet, but the Blazers are crowding the line. And they do, they hand it off. I don't know, Trey. He was brought down right at the 40 or 41. Depending on the spot, they may have stopped him. The ball was handed off to Chris Metcalf, the running back. Who was one of the star players for the Southern Arkansas offense. And as you can see here, he's met at the line by number 11. And I couldn't see the other players, but there was the Marcus Flanagan in on the tackle, trying to make sure that they didn't convert this. Well, Metcalf, as you said earlier, he, uh, he's been pretty active tonight, had a lot of handoffs, but, but VSU's done a really good job of shutting down the run, so, so he hasn't been overly productive, just active. While we're getting a measurement here, the next Blazer football game will be on the road against Wachita Baptist. The Blazers did stop it. So the Blazers, the ball is turned over. The Blazers are going to be taken over at about the 40-yard line. And this, this right here could probably give the Blazers the rest of the momentum that they need to go ahead and close this game out, to go ahead and get that first win of the season and to get the very first win in conference play. Well, that is huge for the Blazers, like you said, with the momentum swing. Not only is that taking wind out of the sails of Southern Arkansas, but the Blazer defense is just showing how productive they can be and how dominant they have been all night. So the, the Blazers will be starting out at about the 38, 39-yard line. 
with great field position, looking to do more work here in the second half. There's four receivers, one running back. Kellen Lewis. There's a flag on the play. There was definitely some movement. Don't know exactly who started, whether it be the offense or defense, but there was definitely some movement there. I like, noticed that Gerald Ford was like he was ready to take off downfield, like he got a little excited there. I mean, he's been making a, a couple big grabs tonight, and he is, what, two for two, for two uh, receptions for 30 yards thus far. So he's already making somewhat of an impact, and he's made those three catches when we really need them. It was on the offense. Number 72, 72 Mesh Wakamati is a true freshman. Big guy, six foot six, 310 pounds, but got a little hasty just then. Jumped off sides, so the ball's moved backwards five yards. So it's now first down with 15 yards to go. The ball's on the 34-yard line. It's uh, 11 minutes and 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Again, four receivers, one running back. We've seen this formation a few times in the first half. A lot of times it's a run up the middle. It's been successful for the Blazers. But Kellen Lewis is looking to pass his time. Finds his receiver. Looks like Gerald Ford breaks a tackle or two and gets it all the way up to midfield. That's a freshman who just received that pass, and he's playing like an experienced guy right there. And coaches expect a lot out of this young man. As you can see, he's displaying every single weapon in his arsenal. Kellen Lewis drops back, and I'm pretty sure he probably felt the pressure coming up behind him. But he was able to get the ball out to number 19, Gerald Ford, who was able to shake off one defender and go up for another, say, 10 yards there he's, on that play. Yep, he zipped the ball right there, which is which is a good thing. I know when you lob them, they have a tendency to have some interceptions, which we experienced earlier with the deflection. But uh, Kellen Lewis is getting the ball there on the line tonight. I think that helps both the receivers out and, and hurts the defenders. And it looks like VSU is also going with a change of pace here, Josh. I know, noticed earlier that we saw the hurry-up offense, and it looks like they had a sense of urgency out here on the field. But now it looks like they're taking the time, going to the huddle, checking with the sideline, trying to see what play they actually want to run, and see how productive they can be now. And maybe just take some of that time off the clock. Well, we're looking at three receivers and a two-back set. We'll see what VSU does with this formation here. And they hand the ball off to Michael Brown, who finds a little space and gains about seven yards there, Trey. Crosses midfield and gets up to about the 42-yard line. It's going to be a good spot. Yeah, the Blazers keep overloading the right side of this formation here, as you've noticed. And right here, he gets the ball, hands it off to number 25, Mike Brown, who has plenty of running room, thanks to the overloading by the wide receivers on the right side. And he just takes it out to the left and... Gains about eight yards on that run there, Josh. Yep. It's now second and two, the ball on the 42-yard line. Got Gabe Mold in motion, the big fullback. Ball's handed off to, to Brown again. Michael Brown, he hesitates, and he is backed up. Never brought down, though. Brown is a tough bat to bring down. Don't know that he really gained much on the play. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. So the Blazers will try it again here on third down, two yards to go. I always heard, Josh, he who hesitates is lost, and that looks like what happened right there on that play. He took too much time trying to think about where he wanted to go instead of just going ahead and doing it and got stopped. Some words of wisdom by my co-host there, and you're exactly right. He broke it down and started dancing. He didn't just drive it forward. If he'd have met that guy with a full head of steam, he probably would have picked up the yard as needed for a first down. Maybe they could do it here. David Arnold in the backfield. I won't be surprised if he's the one who receives the handoff. Arnold is a big guy. Tough to bring down, good at picking up the short yardage. And he does receive the ball. Oh, he had a hole up the middle, but unfortunately he slipped. Like we said, it rained earlier, so the turf is a little slick tonight. Short gain on the play. We'll have to see what the spot looks like and whether or not they may have picked up that first down. Even though he did slip, it looked like he might have picked up a yard there. But then again, I mean, it's 4-1. and one. Yeah, it's 4-1, and one, so the Blazers might actually go for it here. I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, after SAU just went for it, the Blazers are looking to – Go back at him and say, hey, we can do it too. It looks like they're going to. They just brought in number 40, Cameo Holloway, another running back. Haven't seen much of him tonight. Fresh legs. Looks like a quarterback sneak somewhat. Looks like he followed the guard or the center. I think the Blazers may have it. It looks like he got to me there, Josh, and he got a little more push from his running backs. I guess that's why they put all those running backs back there in the backfield to give the quarterback an extra boost just in case he got stuffed at the line. Well, the Blazers did get it, so it's another first down for this Blazer offense. That's a big deal right there, Trey. We just stopped Southern Arkansas on their fourth down attempt, took some wind out of their sails. Now we were successful in our own, again, just building steam for this offense. Which is what they need to do if they want to continue to keep this type of momentum and continuously build confidence in their offense. This running game is milking the clock. We are already down to almost nine minutes here left in the third quarter. Again, the score is 17-7, VSU leading. We got Edward Gregory, the center, pointing out some assignments. The ball is – the snap is – 
low and it bounced to Kellen Lewis, but he's got it now and he's scrambling to his left, looking for an open receiver and ends up throwing it away. Probably the best decision he could have made on that play. A lot of pressure, started out kind of sloppy, and he just had to finish by getting rid of it. Yeah, if one of his wide receivers would have been able to get open, he probably would have been able to find him down the field since he actually was able to get out of the pocket and buy a little time. But the sad thing is he, he wasn't able to make the completion, but the good thing is he got the ball away. And he yeah, his receivers have done a great job tonight of getting open and allowing him to have a target to throw to. So that is something that definitely helped the players out in the first half. Again, back to the four receiver, one back set. David Arnold in the backfield. Kellen Lewis looking down to pass. Finds number 19, Gerald Ford in the middle. He puts a good little stutter step on. Gets the ball down to the 25. That'll be another first down for the Blazers. A great, great catch and reception and run after the catch by Gerald Ford. The freshman's showing out tonight, Trey. And Gerald Ford has been doing this all night. That is his, should be his fifth reception right there, Josh. I mean, he had four for four to five yards earlier and he just continues to keep up his momentum and his productivity. Well, again, back to the four receiver set, one running back. Again, the back is David Arnold, who receives the handoff. And it's met right at the line of scrimmage. There might be a loss on that play. And while we're talking about wide receivers, Josh, let's go ahead and talk about Cedric Jones, who came into this game with 229 receptions and 2,705 receiving yards. And all he needed was six catches to put him in second place in the VSU record books, as well as 25 yards to bump him up into third place in the VSU record books for receiving yards as well. And he right now has five catches for 16 yards. So let's see how well Sergio Jones is able to finish out the game, see if he can break those records. Kellen Lewis is looking his direction. He's on the scramble. He's looking for Cedric Jones, who is in double coverage. Lewis forced out one a little bit, but you can't blame him for going for the big play. You know, Cedric Jones has been a big factor. 2007, he was the All-American sophomore. Always been a big threat here at BSU. Last year had an early season injury, slowed him down a little bit, but he started off this season pretty well. As you mentioned, the first game, four receptions. He is now lacking, a, what, about two receptions for the record himself to, to be the single holder of the of the all-time receptions here at uh, VSU, be he'll, second place? He'll move into second if he gets at least one more reception, but I also failed to mention that he can also move into third all-time in the GSC if he breaks a v record here at VSU as well. So this guy's done more than just show out at VSU. He's done it all throughout the conference. Lewis is scrambling. Has to hit Derek Harris with a quick pass. I think there's going to be a loss on the play. It was already third and 11. The ball was on the 26. Clock still ticking. It's down to seven minutes and 45 seconds here in the third quarter. And that's just your quarterback doing what you expect him to do. If he finds a, he has a little pressure in his face, find the check down receiver, hit him. But the bad thing about that was his check down receiver had a man hot on his tail, and he was able to go ahead and bring him down and, and take him for another six-yard loss putting this Blazers offense in a spot they haven't been too often tonight, which is kicking the field goal. This is the second field goal tonight. Well, this will be a uh, pretty long attempt here by Daniel Anderson. Russell Callaway will be holding the snap. This one's going to be kicked from about almost the 40-yard line, about the 39-yard line. So the kick is off, and he squeaked it in there. He got in there, Trey. That was a good kick. Didn't have a whole lot of breathing room. If that ball had been posted up on about the 42-yard line, it might have hit the bottom rung, but he got it through, so that puts the Blazers up. 20 to 7 with 7 minutes and 8 seconds left here in the third quarter. Great drive there by the Blazers. Unfortunately, they just ran into a wall once they got to about the 20 yard line. But if you've noticed, the Blazers pretty much milked the clock this entire quarter. It's now 7 minutes and 8 seconds left to go in the game. The Blazers just had the ball for around about a good 4 or 5 minutes there. I know in the, the first half you were talking about um, during the halftime that their shortest drive in the first half was four minutes and two seconds, so they really controlled the clock in the first half. That drive ended with the field goal, but several others ended with touchdowns. And that's what you like to see your offense do. If you can go out and you can be productive and put up points on the board, as well as take time away from the other team to prevent them from going out and doing the same thing, then that's a win in any stat column in my book, Josh. Come to Surge Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Odom Library Room 1480. Surge is Students United for Real Gender Equality, and they are ready to make an impact. Check out the website at www.valdosta.edu backslash surge for more details. Well, VSU's back out on the field after that field goal. Daniel Anderson put it in from 21 yards out. Seemed a little longer than that, but uh, uh, excuse me, that was the first half field goal, but he's getting ready to kick off here now. Try and get Southern Arkansas in their own territory. It's a 
Shorter kick here from Daniel Anderson, kick to about the 15-yard line. It's received by Carlos Brown, who's brought down at about the 29-yard line. So the coverage got there pretty quickly. It was about a 14-yard return there, nothing significant. Yeah, Ryan Smith once again in on the tackle, trying to make sure he makes an impact, at least on special teams. He had to, he actually filled in a little bit at linebacker position last week since a couple of players were feeling under the weather. But he came in and he made the most of his time, even though he is a freshman. I mean, he has plenty of years to come back in and help this Blazer defense out. Well, VSU is going to try another strong defensive stance here. They're lining up with four down linemen. Larry Dean show, is showing blitz. It might just be... Number 10 receives the pitch, and he is met right at the line. I saw our big number 94 come flying over the top, Demetrius Bozeman. He was hit and stuck, and what the number 10 wasn't moving forward very quickly. Quentin Porter, Bozeman came over the top, as you saw, as you'll see right here, and just brought him down. Josh Wiley with the stop, and watch number 94 come flying in and jumping over, helping with that tackle. That's a big boy. I'd hate to have him landing on top of me. So VSU with a good defensive stand. It's a two-yard gain on the play, so it's second and eight. The ball on the 27-yard line. Six minutes and 21 seconds on the clock. McComey st steps back looking for a deep pass. It's incomplete. I thought for a second there it was received, but it was incomplete. The receiver was guarded by Rashad Etheridge. That was good defense. Didn't give him any breathing room. Almost made a good catch there, but I think he stepped out of bounds right when he caught it. And that was Raphael Tyson, number one. He used to be a, a running back for this SAU offense, but they got they moved him out to wide receiver, and I'm surprised that he wasn't able to come down with that. It looked like he had the position to make the play, but just couldn't come up with it. Well, Rashad Etheridge, the senior, used his experience over Tyson, who's only a sophomore, so maybe experience helped, helped Etheridge in that one, but... It was a good throw, and it looked like it was going to be a good reception, but it was well defended there by Etheridge. McComey's moving his tight end in motion, fakes the handoff and steps back. He's being pressured. Melvin Black's on his heels. Larry Dean's closing in. He has to throw it away. There's a flag on the field. Not exactly sure. It looked like it might have happened in the backfield there, Josh. It looked like maybe one of the Southern Arkansas offensive linemen tried to make a block for the quarterback and drew a penalty instead. Well, Larry Dean was in hot pursuit there and forced McComey out of bounds. Also, McComey had to get rid of the ball because he saw Dean. So, a lot of strong defensive pressure there on behalf of the linebacker. There's holding on the offense on number 73. The penalty's been declined by VSU because it's now fourth down. It's fourth and eight. The ball's on the 27. So, the Mule Riders are coming back in to punt the ball away. That's another good sign for the VSU defense, stopping another potentially successful drive. That was Andre Molden, the offensive tackle. He's also a freshman, so there could be a lack of experience there that also caused a penalty there, Josh. Well, Derrick Harris is back to receive the punt. He's standing on the 40-yard line, Trey, so if he if he receives the ball right there and just fair catches at the VSU, will have good field possession. So the punt is off. It's a pretty good kick. It's a high spiraling, and it is fair. Oh, no. Derrick Harris dropped it. I think he fell on top of the, I think it's still going to be VSU ball, but it's going to be a more about the 36-yard line instead of the 40. That's one thing that will make you hold your breath right there, Josh. When you see your, your kick, your punt returner standing back there and he fair catches it and he has a swarm of white jerseys around him and then he bobbles the, the catch and drops it. But the good thing is he was able to jump on it and make sure his offense will actually have a chance to go back down the field and put more points on the board. Well, our crew would like to quickly apologize for the two cameras that we're using tonight. Uh, due to the rain, we're only broadcasting with two cameras a, instead of the, the, the normal four. So we apologize for any loss in quality or, or visuals, but we are definitely working hard, and we will get you everything that we can. But thank you for bearing with us. Back to the game now. There's five minutes and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. VSU has the ball in the 46-yard line. Kellen Lewis fakes the handoff and hits Cody Case. Out at about the 37-yard line, so maybe a pickup about one there, Trey. Not a whole lot. And he was quickly brought down by John Ritt, who was a free safety, who's also a freshman. I know one thing we failed to mention, Josh, that besides the starters who are actually on the field right now, no Southern Arkansas has a very young team. A majority of the people on the team, they have, I want to say, 15, 15 true freshmen, with 15 redshirt freshmen, and I, like 12 juniors, no, 15 juniors and 12 seniors on the squad. Their, their head coach is pretty young, too. Here comes Lewis. Lewis is going to be brought down the backfield. I don't know if you can see it, 
But number six on the defense, that was Darren Lewis. Almost completely hurdled Ronnie Nelson. It looks like he's used his shoulder pad to step over. Let's see the replay Let's here. Let's see the replay here. Ronnie Nelson was trying to make a block for the wide for his quarterback. And he and number six, Darren Lewis practically used his, his chest as some stepping, stepping stones there. Well, he definitely showed off his jumping abilities. Look a little bit like Jackie Chan. <laughs> Ronnie Nelson almost got knocked out on that play, but thought, he seems to be fine. But that was an impressive hurdle we saw I there. I thought Air Jordan was retired by now. Yeah, he's supposed to be in the Hall of Fame, not on VSU football field. Kellen Lewis with the snap. Feeling the pressure, dumps it off to Ronnie Nelson, who was brought down behind the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, this Mule Rider defense is really stepping up their game. And as I wanted to mention earlier, you said they're a young team, and I was saying how their coach is young too. This is only the second game for Bill Keppel as a head college football coach. The Mule Riders leader has unfortunately had to play the powerhouses, University of North Alabama, and the VSU Blazers in his first two games. So. This, this young, somewhat inexperienced coach is having to step into the, the conference's best teams right early. But the good thing is for the Mule Riders that this game still was in striking distance. I mean, still four minutes to go here in this third quarter, and it's still just 20 to seven. Well, Jack Fulford receives the punt. He receives the, the snap and punts it off. It's a good kick, high spiral. The receiver gets it down at about the 30 yard line. The returner made a move, made Dudley Spence miss. But he's brought down by our number four, Eric Sledge, at about the about the 35-yard line. So even though he he put on a million-dollar move, what much more than a 10-cent finish, like you said last time. Yeah, as you can see here, LaMarcus Howard gets feels the ball and he tries to cut it to the right side of the field, trying to see if he can make anything happen. But he made a couple good moves, but then he was brought down by number four right there, as you can see by the shirt, who is Eric Sledge. Yep. Who's also a, who's a running back. I don't usually expect to see a running back making an open field tackle like that, but I guess that's what happens when you're a part of this VSU team. You make the play when you need it. Need to be well, upon. Need to be well-rounded here. The ball's on the 32-yard line. It's first and 10. Ball is handed off to number 11, I believe is his number, and he gains about five yards on the carry, so a pretty decent carry there. The clock's still running. There's only three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. This running, this running offenses, these running offenses are really milking the clock. He goes, actually number 21, I apologize. That's Chris Metcalf. Seen a lot of him tonight. But the good thing is the Blazers defense is actually keeping him in check. He has so far seven attempts and one yard. Well, McCombie's under center now. There's a flag on the field. I didn't see anything just then, but we'll, we'll hear shortly from the officials and see exactly what they were calling there. Prior to the snap, number 73 on the offense. It was a neutral zone infraction there. Okay. Lined up a little in front of the ball there by number 73 on the offense. So the ball is going to be backed up. Is that a five or ten yard penalty there, Trey? Five yards? Used to be a five yard penalty there. So the ball is now on the 38 yard line. It's second down with four, excuse me, third down, nine yards to go. So right here, VSU could really use that break and turn it around. One, one running back, three wide receivers set. VSU bringing pressure. They deliver the ball to number 10, who was brought down right away by our number 26. Our number 26 is true, Matt Pierce. The true freshman. freshman Matt Pierce out there in the secondary trying to come up and make a big play. The quarterback finds his wide receiver, but too bad he ran to Matt Pierce, who wrapped him up quickly and brought him down. Well, number 10 was Quentin Porter on their team. He's a senior, so. The true freshman welcomed the senior to Baysmore Hyder and held him up short for that one. So it's now third and four. I guess that last one was actually a replay of the second down, not the third. It's two minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock here in the third quarter. Here comes McComey stepping back in the pocket. Finds his number 21 who is hit immediately. That is an awesome hit. Unfortunately, the VSU player has not gotten back up. Number 21, Chris Metcalf was the one who was hit. When he was hit, I hope we have a replay of it, but he almost did an entire front flip on that one. He, he knocked him into the air and made him spin. It looked like it was number 44, Ratu Rebella, who's been all over the field and was lights out against Newberry with four, with 10 tackles, along with Larry Dean. Mm. And as you can see, there was a very punishing hit. And it looked like he might have hurt himself a little bit there. Yeah, he put his shoulder right there into to Metcalf's 
thighs and just just took him out right there, but he's still not up just yet. So this will be a good time to talk about some of our announcements. Um, again, the VSU Blazer football game will be on the road against Wachita Baptist next week. To follow the Dean Machine and not miss a beat of action, check the Valdosta State Athletic website to learn more about VSU football broadcast. All right, Josh, so coming out of the halftime break, how, how do you feel about this Blazer offense here, Josh? Have, have you been impressed even more just yet, or which is more impressive, the offense or the defense? Well, I have to say, honestly, I mean, for the offense, the story of the night, I mean, they've done well, but penalties have really just killed this team. I mean, uh, our scoring position would have been a lot better on several of them. As you, I mean, looking at the monitor here, there's we've had six penalties for 48 yards tonight. That That's definitely a little demoralizing, you know, so – I feel if we could eliminate some of these penalties, our possessions will be a lot more efficient and uh, we might see a lot more points coming out of it. What do you think, Trey? How's the offense looking to you right now? The offense is looking pretty well around this for We've actually been held from getting any touchdowns since the first half, but the good thing is we're keeping everything moving. We're steady gaining yards slowly and steadily. We're taking what the defense is giving us and we're making plays and we're making something out of nothing. And it was actually number 14, the freshman, Alex Webster, that was down on the play. Not number 44, but two rebellion. Well, he Apologize could, for that. He was probably just a little shaken up on the play, but good news is he's up and walking off on his own power, so seems to be fine. Um, you know, looking at the SAU offense and defense, they don't appear to have made a whole lot of changes in their game plan. It just looks like maybe they're executing a little better, so they're having a little more success here against the Blazers right now. They're getting ready to punt the ball away. Again, Derek Harris in the backfield hoping to return it. Their punter gets it off with his running punt format. Derek Harris receives the – oh, he breaks the tackle. Well, he doesn't get a whole lot of yardage, but he showed his ability to stay on his feet. Right as he caught the ball, he was hit, and he did not go down. And that's dangerous for your, your returner to do, to take to catch the ball and have a man right in his face and still attempt to return. But the good thing is, like you said, he broke the tackle, and then he beat the men to the, he beat his defenders to the outside and was able to pick up at least 10 yards off of that. It is dangerous. He may hear about that from Coach Dean, about calling that fair catch next time because it's easy to get fumbles doing that. Well, I'm excited to see the – the VSU offensive line, I saw Edward Gregory come leaping through the football. Looks like he's ready. He's hyped up and ready to go. Glad to see they're still energized. There's a two-back set, three receivers. Kellen Lewis receives the snap and hands it off to Michael Brown, who finds a hole in the middle. A gain of great yards. The flag on the play. But Michael Brown makes it all the way up to the 40-yard line. So that was a very good carry there by Michael Brown. Hopefully it won't be coming back. That was a first down pickup. We'll see that if they was get a very good run. As you can see here, Michael Brown getting the ball and just running between the tackles and making the, making the big play. Running up field, breaking a couple tackles there, made the spin move to make number 26 miss, and he carried a couple of the Southern Arkansas defenders with him along the way. I seen number 90, Ryan Terry there, trying to get in on the play. Well, Terry was one of the players we mentioned to watch for. Big defensive end. He's very active, along with number 36. I mean, excuse me, 56. Uh, Cedric Thornton, both guys, Thornton's a defensive tackle, big guy. He's been, been fairly active tonight. The flag evidently was on Southern Arkansas, so the issue gets to keep their good field position right here at the 35-yard line. There's a minute and 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Brown with the handoff again. Take, takes it down to about the 30-yard line. He was, he was grabbed at about the uh, – 35, but gains another five yards. And as you can see, the Blazers now switching the pace of the game and going back to the speedy running backs. As you can see, Michael Brown here getting the ball, cutting it to the outside, making a couple defenders miss, and then until he's finally spun down around the 30. There's another good carry there. Second down, five yards to go. Down to a minute left here in the third quarter. Ball back to Michael Brown again. Finds another hole. Gets it down to about the 20 this time, so it should be a first down. Michael Brown. Michael Brown with a first down pickup right there for the Blazers. So the Blazers are moving the chains. That is three straight runs right there for Michael Brown, Josh. As you can see, he's doing what it takes to get the yardage that the team needs to try to convert to get these first downs. And you know, I bet a large part of that is the fact that the, the running back core is so deep here at Valdosta. Now, you know, here in the third quarter, Michael Brown's still fresh enough to be able to run the ball three times in a row in the third quarter. Looks like Derrick Harris is getting his turn this time. He rounds the outside corner using that speed. He takes it down all the way to about the four or five yard line in Southern Arkansas territory. Derrick Harris was moving. 
And this is what the Blazers like to do. They like to bring in a whole lot of running backs and keep them backs fresh so they come to the end of the game with defensive war down. They can make plays like this. Look, he breaks one tackle. He's fast enough to beat the defender to the outside. He makes another man who slips down who might have been able to make the play until he's forced out by number 58. Derek Maurice Harris. Thornton. They, he is quick. They're down at the four-yard line now, VSU, that is. 20 seconds left on the clock, so it's going to be a quick play here. The ball's back to Harris, who walks it in. Almost untouched. Gets in there, so it's now 26 to 7. Blazers leaving 14 seconds left in the third quarter. If this extra point's converted, then VSU's going to have a 20 point lead here. That's a big deal for this offense. And this is how the Blazers get you, like, I've, like I told you, Josh. They constantly run the ball with those fresh legs that they have coming off the sidelines and look like here. The defense is a little too tired to make the cuts to get back in to close off the, out the inside. As you can see, the Southern Arkansas defense, some of the players were even. And the kick is good. They were even walking off just like, there he is again. He's back in the end zone, you know. So the Blazers are now up 27 to 7 with that score, that extra point. Trey, let's try and recap that scoring drive. What did you see there on the VSU offense? Once again, they're just keeping everything simple. They're running the ball, and since the SAU defense looks like they're a little tired out there and they're a little too slugs to try to move around and try to stop those fast backs of the Blazers. We have a lot of guys in the defensive backs who can get in there and make impacts. Just like we have Cedric Evans, we have Michael Brown who can come in and relieve Ronnie Nelson and David Arnold and can put points on the board as you saw there. Yeah, these running backs are so deep. We have, as we mentioned in the first half, we had four, four guys carrying the ball four different guys carry the ball in the first half. So this really allows them to stay refreshed throughout the game and they can keep applying pressure even in the deep, deep quarters here. So VSU's getting ready to kick back off. There's 14 seconds left in the third quarter, getting ready for our fourth quarter here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. VSU has really done a good job on both sides of the ball tonight, uh, 27 to seven. And I can tell you something else, Josh. It's going to take something short of a miracle for SAU to come in and break that nine-game losing streak to the Blazers. All right. Well, Daniel Anderson has set the ball up. He's lining up. Blazer Nation's on their feet cheering him on, and the kick is off. He kicks it down to about the five-yard line, six-yard line, where it's received and is being brought back. By number 26, a big hit is put on him, so he is stopped. Once the clock again, stops at seven seconds. Once again, LaMarcus Howard on the on the return, who's a freshman, trying to make an impact and try to put his team in good field position to hopefully go down and get a score. Well, there's seven seconds left here in the third quarter, so time enough for probably about one play here. And we'll be heading into the final quarter of this game. But yeah, that was good, good defensive stand there just then, or, or good stop on the return by the VSU defense, VSU special teams. McCombie's under center, has two backs in the backfield, two receivers. Fakes the handoff, he rolls to his left, looking deep for a receiver. He's looking for number one, all oh, the ball hits him in the hands but doesn't stick, it's Raphael Tyson. Uh, number 24, Carlos Anderson did a good job of getting up there and entered messing up the vision of the pass. That's what you don't want to see from your wide receivers. He loses focus and takes his eyes off the ball and then drops what could have been a completion. Well, at the end of the third quarter, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, we have a few messages, but we'll be right back here to start the fourth quarter between VSU and SAU. Lazy bones, low friends through the day. All over America, we're no longer just sedentary, we're stationary. And that's bad news for your bones. Because bones need weight-bearing activity to grow strong and stay strong. So get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Never heard a word I say. Coast Guard Reserve. Hello, I'm Andrew Young. 
I was formerly ambassador to the United Nations and mayor of Atlanta. Now I'm with Good Works International. Everywhere I've been in the world, the people whom I've seen who are most appreciated are people from the Peace Corps. Whenever somebody says, how can I get to be an ambassador in international business, I say, join the Peace Corps. The Peace Corps will redefine your world and change your life. And welcome back here to Baysmore Hyder Stadium where we're starting the fourth quarter with VSU leading Southern, Al uh, Southern Arkansas 27 to seven. VSU just is showing, showing blitz here. McComey gets the pass off, but it is incomplete. The diving receiver could not come up with it. It was right off the fingertips of Quentin Porter, who scratched out for the pass, but was unable to bring it in. Well, VSU has a pretty comfortable lead right now. They're up by 20. A win tonight would make them 1-0 in the GSC Conference, which would really, really help their standings amongst their conference rivals because as we know Trey the GSC is very competitive you know with with three or four major teams who are always competing each year so a win tonight would be very helpful for their standing and it's a very strong conference as well well it's 14 minutes and 55 seconds here left in the fourth quarter balls on the 24 yard line it's third and 10 for Southern Arkansas the ball is completed to Carlos Brown who's got some running room there's a flag on the field if the flag stands, if the flag is not against VSU, or excuse me, if the flag is against VSU, it's going to be a first down here for Southern Arkansas. That was a good run there by Carlos Brown. Picked up about 11 on the play. And they're just going back to what they've been trying to set up all night. A good little screen, as you can see here, he was able to hit his man who picked up a couple yards before he was being brought down by three Blazers defenders. Yeah, there were three Blazers in on that one. The last one. It is on the offense. That's good news for VSU. So that run is going to be taken back, and it is it's going to be repeating third down, or is it no? Is it going to be fourth down? And it puts the ball down on on the 19 yard line. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to be third and 15 with the ball on the 19 yard line where it's spotted right now. So we got a long way to go here to get the first down for the Mule Riders and see if VSU can stop them. And the snap gets right by the quarterback who falls on at the three-yard line. There is a flag on the play. Number 97, Melvin Black, needs to control his temper. I saw him with a little, a little forearm shoved to number 53 on the other team, number 53 being Joshua Bradley. Hopefully the refs didn't see that one. And it looks like there was a miscommunication between the quarterback and the center where the quarterback wasn't ready, and he just snapped the ball, and the quarterback was able to run back and get on top of it. That's, that's a good play by Ryan McComb. Well, number 33. All right, it's fourth down for the Mule Riders, so the VSU offense is going to have an opportunity to put some more points on the board. Who do you think we'll see at quarterback? you think uh, Russ Callaway might come in and get a few snaps in here in the fourth quarter, Trey? I'm pretty sure the Blazers will go ahead and try to take some more of that time off the clock before they decide to put the backups in and try to make a statement and let everybody know they are a team to be reckoned with here in the GSC. Well, Derek Harris is going to be the back that returns the punt. The and punter. The Punter's going to have to be tiptoeing back there. His heels are almost out of the end zone. If he, does, if he receives this ball and is on the line, it'll be a safety for VSU. It's a high snap, but he gets it off. It's blocked. There's a hand that gets on that punt. It's still a decent punt, though. It gets out to about the 40, almost 46-yard line. So they had a very favorable roll right there, Southern Arkansas did. It could have been pretty, pretty disastrous for them right there. And they declined the hold, which put Southern Arkansas in the fourth and fifth, fourth and third situation to try to get the first down, which is why the Blazers have the ball back now. All right, well, we uh, Blazers getting ready to start here on the offensive side of the ball. There's 13 minutes and 55 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Blazers are leading by 20. They're up 27 to seven. Gonna have good field position here. They're already in Southern Arkansas territory, the ball on the 45 yard line. So it'll be first and 10, ball on the 45 for the VSU starting offense. Kellen Lewis is still in at quarterback. Hands the ball off to Derek Harris. He does a little wiggling and gets up to about the 43 yard line. So gained of about two or three yards right there. And, Just this, and this is what I expect the Blazers to come out and do, Josh, to get the ball to the running backs and let them go ahead and take the ball right up the middle, straight at these tired 
defensive players of Southern Arkansas. All right, just receiving word now. We'll, we'll tell you after the play here, but VSU has four receivers, one back. The back is Derek Harris. Got a back in, uh, receiver in motion, which is Gerald Ford. Picks up a good block there. There is a flag on the play. Harris gains maybe a yard, nothing to it really. Actually, he may lose, lose a yard on that one. Just received word that against Newberry, Japri Miles, one of the starting linebackers for VSU, he broke his ankle on, early on in the game. And uh, he's going to receive a medical red shirt. So Japri Miles is not going to be losing a season. That's very fortunate for VSU and for, for Japri. Yeah, he's a very big part of this Blazer defense. I, we're missing him out here on the field tonight, but Ratu Rebella was able to fill in for him, and he's making a pretty good impact for the team. All right, there's a penalty against the defense. I'm going to see, see what it is. Uh, there, were two, there were two penalties on that, and uh, so they both offset, so we're actually going to replay the down. So I believe it's still going to be second and eight, the ball on the 43-yard line. Actually, it looks like the ball's on the 42-yard line. So VSU with another chance here to try and make something happen. And they're doing what they want to do. They're keeping the clock ticking. There's two running backs in the backfield, three receivers. Cedric Jones lined up on the left side. It's a handoff to David Arnold, who was met right at the line. Trey, what are you seeing on the for Southern Arkansas defense? They seem to be really shutting down the run right now. What they're trying to do is make sure that they stop the run, and hopefully they'll be able to get VSU in a, a long third-yard situation where they can hopefully get the ball back and probably try to put some points on the board before the game is over and maybe try to put themselves within striking distance if something – might happen as far as special teams or maybe a big defensive play where they get a turnover and get a quick score, then anything is happening. Might be able to get back in it. Well, they're in that three down lineman format right now. They're still doing a good job against the run. Kellen Lewis is checking things off, receives the snap. He's looking to throw left side. A lot of pressure. Saw him at the last second. Oh, delivered a pass. Looking for number 84, Jackson Dean. Overthrew him. Trey, that was. That was a pretty agile move right there by Kellen Lewis. I think most other quarterbacks would have gone down right then, but he was able to, to pick up the rusher and uh, step aside. Yeah, it was a free safety. John Ritt, once again, the freshman coming in, pressuring the quarterback to make sure he got the ball out. But the thing is about Kellen Lewis, he's able to spot the pressure coming from either side and make a move and try to buy a little time and let his wide receivers get open and hopefully get him out of a sticky situation. Well, Jack Fulford's back in the game to punt for VSU. Gets off a pretty decent kick. He's going to try and get it within the 20. And he does. Great kick by Jack. He's going to be down at the 10-yard line. So another great showing there by Jack Fulford. As we mentioned against Newberry, Average 47 and a half yards per punt. This guy last year was recognized as, as the GSC player of the week. And uh, he's he's doing a great job for the Blazers again this year already. And see, this looks like this what the strategy for the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders could be here, Josh. They still have 12 minutes to go in the quarter, and they have the ball in the 10. But if they're able to put a, a couple good series together here, they might be able to put some points on the board, and that'll just make it 27 to 14. They're still just two scores out of tying this game up or taking the lead after that because the Blazers only have 27. So if they get 14, then it'll just be two scores out of it taking the lead back. With three touchdowns, they could take the lead, so Blazers definitely can't fall asleep. There's a receiver in motion. McComey pitches it to him. Looks like they're going to be trying to do, oh, it's close to a safety. He's down at the one-yard line, I believe. Blazers read that play all the way. Can't tell number 94 was the one who actually made the tackle. And that was number 10, Quentin Porter, on the carry, who was who caught the pitch and jugged it a little bit. They're lucky he almost fumbled it, but they look like he was trying to settle for a pass, maybe just trying to switch the ball to the other hand. But he got the pressure and he dropped down right there on the one yard line. Well, Demetrius Bozeman, Demetrius Bozeman was the one who applied the pressure and brought him down. So VSU's using a great position here to to really put a put some damage up against this Southern Arkansas offense. VSU standing at the one-yard line trying to pump the crowd out. Bozeman's out there waving his arms. That's one thing about this VSU defense. They stay pumped up. Arkansas taking a timeout. So VSU, t VSU TV will present Vote 2009, a local political forum, on Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m. That's Vote 2009 this Tuesday night on cable channel 20 VSU TV. All right, we have 11 minutes and 22 seconds left here in the game. Blazers are up 27-7. to here in the fourth quarter, and we'll be back after these messages. Veldasta, 
More Than You Know, a place where kids dream and kind hearts prevail. In a setting full of recreation and excitement for all ages. A city of vibrant growth, career opportunities, and a thriving business environment. Combined with progressive thinking, it's about exploring your future. Valdosta, Georgia, more than you know. And welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. We're in the fourth quarter. We have 11 minutes and 22 seconds left. The Blazers have Southern Arkansas pinned down on their one yard line, hoping for a safety here. McComey's back in shotgun, looking for a receiver and overthrows him. It was a pretty well thrown ball. The ball was intended for number eight, who is their receiver, Isaac Marufo. Marufo, excuse me. But again, it was thrown out of bounds. So the Blazers still have them pinned down on the one yard line. It's now third down with 19 yards to go. Southern Arkansas is not in a favorable position. And some quick stats to look at here, Josh, while we have a quick little break, was at the end of the third quarter, Southern well, Arkansas had 34 plays for only 47 yards, whereas VSU ran 61 plays for 320. So a drastic difference right there, giving credit to the VSU defense for all of that right there as far as shutting the team down. It's a pitch into the end zone. Uh, he gets out of it, number 21. He gets out of the end zone. It was Chris Metcalf. We've seen him a few times tonight. He's had quite a few carries, but not a whole lot of yards, which – Again, it's a testament to the VSU defense for, for maintaining that running game. But that did bring up fourth down. It's about fourth and 15. So Derek Harris is sitting at about the 40-yard line looking, looking to receive the punt. VSU has potential to have great field position right here. Their punter is backed up in the end zone again. We'll see what, we'll see what comes up at this time. Last time he was able to get it off and get a pretty favorable roll as well. The snap is high again. It's out of the end zone. That'll be a safety. So the Blazers get to tack two more points onto the board, and they're That's also going to get a kickoff. You know, Trey, the last time they were they were punting from the end zone, it was a high snap then. That time it was too high, so they might need to work on their, their snapping game between the long snapper and the punter. There might be another place where the long snap was just trying to make a play and trying to get the ball to the punter as fast as he could, and hopefully the Blazers wouldn't be able to go ahead and kick the ball out and get a, a favorable matchup here. But another thing that I also want to focus on here, Josh, is that even though at the end of the third quarter, Southern Arkansas didn't even make it into the red zone, whereas the Blazers was able to make it into the red zone four times, and all four times they were able to come away with a touchdown. Another big difference in between the offense of both teams is the fact that Southern Arkansas only had five first downs at the end of the third quarter, but coming into the fourth quarter, VSU had 21. That is a very big difference, Josh. What, you know, what do you have to say about that? I was going to say the VSU special teams have, have done a very good job tonight as well over the last couple seasons. Leading up to tonight, in the last two seasons, they've scored 69 points. So VSU's really been helped out by their special teams, including that play right there, tacking on two more with that safety. So they'll be getting ready to receive a kickoff here and start back on their offensive series and try and tack a few more on there. But VSU, again, is up 29-7 to with 10 minutes and 33 seconds left here in the fourth quarter trying to tack on a few more and, and maybe make a little bit example of, of what they've learned from their opening loss against Newberry. And that's what you like to see from your teams. If you take some lumps in the very first game or any game, period, you like to see the, your players progress from those lumps, learn as much as they possibly can to come back and not make the exact same mistakes twice. The kicker is actually shoeless right now, Trey. It uh, looks like he's going to be trying something different right now, taking off the boot and going barefoot. I've seen it before, but I don't think I've ever seen it in college. I'd hate to, to see him have to run out there and try and make a tackle without a shoe on. Maybe it's just his style of kicking, but, hey, maybe he's used to it. But I, they always tell me if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, it's, it's Jake Hawkins is the one kicking right now, number 13. He's actually listed as a wide receiver. He gets the kickoff. It's not that great of one. It's get down to about the 30-yard line where Derek Harrison takes it, runs it to the right side of the field, picking up a good block over there. Takes it down to about the 49-yard line. So great field position starting here for VSU. The barefoot kick really didn't pay off that well for Southern Arkansas. Maybe he wasn't able to get enough leg in like he expected to, but then putting the ball on the 30 and giving it to Derrick Harris is a very bad idea. As you can see here, he picks up a couple blocks from his, his teammates, and he's able to break it to the outside and pick up a couple more yards until he slips down right here instead of actually being tackled around the 49-yard line. Well, the rain is playing a little bit of a factor tonight. It hasn't rained in probably in a couple hours now, but that turf stays a little bit wet and it gets a little slick. So 
That hurt Derek Harris a little just then. Now have one running back and four receivers. Kellen Lewis gets the pass off to number one, who makes a nice move, gets around the corner, and is still on his feet, gets it down to almost the 35-yard line. That was Cedric Evans, the receiver. And Cedric Evans was able to turn a little gain into a very big gain to get his Blazers a, very, a first down. And look at Kellen Lewis right here, quick quick drop back and pass, and he hit his wide receiver right in the bread basket, and he was able to make one man move, two man, two man miss right there, and he was able to cut back and get a couple more yards. Well, again, a handoff to Michael Brown, who takes it up the middle, gets it down to about the 31 yard line. That was a pretty aggressive carry right there. Took it right up the gut, hit some guys and kept going. That was a good carry again by Michael Brown. We're down to nine minutes and 50 seconds here left in the fourth quarter. Blazers up 29 to seven. Second down and five. And the Blazers going back to the hurry up offense, Josh. Well, second down and five. They hand it back off to Michael Brown again, who picks up probably about four to five yards right there. So it's going to be close to another Blazer first down. Brown, the, the one thing I like about Michael Brown here, Josh, is every time he gets the ball, it looks as if he's been shot out of a cannon coming out of the backfield. Look at him right here. He's going full speed ahead and only taking about two or three steps, and he's able to carry a couple defenders along with him along the way. Well, it's a first down from a very explosive back. Keeps his feet buzzing and keeps moving forward like you're taught to do. Handed back off to Michael Brown. That's the third one in a row. Picks up about two yards on that carry. Seth Evans, this is only his second game since winning a championship here at VSU. He's been somewhat inactive, but tonight he's jumping right back into that role of being a predominant receiver. Tonight he has 31 yards in reception, so he's really added to this Blazer offense by catching the ball and getting upfield, making people miss. Well, we have two backs in the backfield. We have three receivers. Isaiah Jupiter looks to be on the left side. I haven't seen much of him tonight. Maybe they'll look his way on this play. Kellen Lewis receives the snap, and he is looking left. It's to number one, though, Cedric Evans, who catches the ball and really doesn't gain much of anything, I don't think. Back to about the line of scrimmage. Looks like the Southern Arkansas defense was waiting on that play right there, Josh. It looks as if they had already. It was, it's, it's almost as if they were in the huddle with the issue on that one. They may have been eavesdropping, but... The issue was somewhat unsuccessful on that play. It's now third down and 11 with the ball on the 26-yard line. We're down to eight minutes and 15 seconds in the fourth. So the issue has a lot of yards to gain here to try and gain that first down. Again, third and 11. Lewis with the re receives a snap, fakes a throw. Now he's scrambling. Hits Cedric Jones number eight with the reception. I believe, Trey, that's going to be enough for a first down. And I think with that reception, Cedric Evans just took over second place with VSU's all-time receiving. Yeah, Cedric Jones did just take Cedric over second Jones. place. And look, as you can see here, Kellen Lewis dropping back, and he has plenty of time in the pocket. He pumps fakes, but he can't find his receiver just yet. But then he scrambles out like he's been doing all night, making time, and he hits Cedric Jones, and he was able to pick up the first down and help Cedric Jones break that record. No, he didn't get the first down. It's four and three, so they're going to go for the field goal here. Well, Daniel Anderson back on the field. He's already put a couple in tonight. See if he can make it a third one. He gets the kick up. And the kick was good. So the Blazers now have a 32-7 lead with seven minutes and 19 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Trey, let's talk about that scoring drive a little bit. What did you see from the Blazers? I've seen the Blazers look as if they're just trying to be patient and run some more of this time off the clock. The majority of the players from that on that drive were mostly runs, I guess, just trying to like I said, take time off the clock, and since they have a pretty big lead already with just seven minutes to go in the game, being fourth quarter, they're ready to just go ahead and pack it up and take it on in, Josh. One thing I did notice how the Blazer offense, that was a shorter possession right there. As we were talking about earlier, they their, their first half drives were around four minutes or so, maybe a little longer. That one only took a minute and a half. Unfortunately, they had to settle for a field goal, but hey, points are points, and they're now up 32-7, to seven, leading by 25 points. That's that's a pretty big margin. I don't know if SAU is going to be able to come back from that one. And that's a lot of scores with only a little time left here, Josh. I think it's practically almost impossible. But then again, you never know. Well, catch the David Dean Show on VSU TV every Monday at 9 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. Check TV Guide listings for other airings of the David Dean Show here on VSU TV. So do you still expect to see a lot of the stars still being in with only seven minutes left and 32 to se up 32 to 7? Actually, I think it'd be a good time to maybe put in some of these younger guys, maybe the more exper inexperienced guys, and let them get their feet wet in a conference game. You know, this is this actually is a big game for both teams. 
and it'd be a good way to break the ice for some of the more inexperienced guys. Daniel Anderson lines up for the kick. Puts it up in the air, it's a good kick. Takes it down to about the six yard line. It's received, oh, a big hit. Big hit by number 11 on the VSU defense. That was Demarcus Flanagan. He put a strong hit right there on the returner. The returner was number 17, Travars Brown. As you can see right here, Flanagan comes to the middle and just pops, just pops number 17, Travars Brown. Brown got off the field just fine, but he'll be remembering that one as they go back to Arkansas tonight. And as you've seen, after the hit, he put a little spin on him. He's lucky he lost his foot in there a good little bit. Well, the VSU defense looks to continue their dominance. Stepping back, the ball is handed off, but the guys, the running back is met right at the line of scrimmage, so don't believe there will be much of a gain at all on that one. The clock's still ticking with seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter, so this run game's not going to help Southern Arkansas as far as time management's concerned. And it looks like a lot of the backups are in now, Josh, like we expect they should be anyway so they can get their feet wet and get a little more experience under the belt here in a, in a conference game. Yeah, I see number 46, Dan Burdett's checked in at linebacker as well as number 27, Donald Maxwell, and number 31, Ryan Smith. So we have three new linebackers on the field getting some experience here. McComey steps back, hits his check down receiver again, number 17, Brown, Travaris Brown. And he is brought down quickly by Dan Burdett. And it looks like it's hard to tell who the other, Carlos Anderson was also in on the tackle. So that's swarm defense back in effect, as you can see right here. McComey stepping back, hitting Brown. Burdett steps up, as well as Carlos Anderson, and they bring him down together. I also noticed number 33, Chauncey Du Bois, is also in the game for the Blazers, as well as number 56, Josh Stevens. Number 21, Rashad Etheridge, still in the game. He's the senior trying to manage, manage things. Josh Wiley is still there, so still have some experience on the field. Ball snap, McCombie rolls to his right. Looking downfield, there's not a lot of people open. The ball is tipped out of bounds. Great play right there by Josh Wiley. The receiver, number eight, was wide open, Isaac Marufo. He was standing there trying to make something happen. And Wiley comes out of nowhere and knocks the ball out of bounds, making a good play. And number 45, Tay Ogletree, has also filled in for the true freshman, Matt Pierce, in the, at the safety position. Well, that brings up fourth down for Southern Arkansas. They're putting their punt team back on the field. They, they aren't that desperate yet. There's only five minutes and 45 seconds left in the game, but they're still using logic, trying to make the spark play here. So Derek Harris back just across midfield down to about the 40-yard line, anticipating the kickoff for the punt. Hoping for a good return here. Punt is off. It is a, it's a knuckling kick. It's caught down about the 34-yard line. It's fair caught. Fair catch right there from... Derek Harris, the ball spotted at the 35-yard line. So, VSU again with pretty good territory to start out their offensive series. And with just five minutes left to go in the game, Josh, I see them coming out, maybe the second team. But then again, they could have some of their first team players still in, so they have a little experience on the field. But I expect them just to come out, run the ball, and try to take the, take the time off the clock, Josh. And as you can see, Russ Calloway in, number five. We also have number four, Eric Sledge in at running back. So, I mean, I, I expect to see the second team get a lot of snaps here and go ahead and finish this game out for the Blazers. Yep, Russ Calloway's in there. Hands the ball off to number four, Eric Sledge, who takes the ball up for about a three-yard gain. You know, another young guy who's really showed out tonight is freshman kicker Daniel Anderson. He's perfect tonight, three for three on field goals, with the long one being 49 yards. So the guy has really shown off his leg, and that's a good thing for this VSU squad. Again, he's a true freshman, so he could be here for four or five more years and really – put quite a few through the uprights. Yes, you can, and which is what we need anyway. We need a, some people that can come in and put points on the board, which will help this Blazer offense and make the defense and not have to work as hard. Well, an offensive player for, uh, excuse me, a defensive player for Southern Arkansas is limping off the field. It's number 37, Greg Nelson. Seems to be all right. He limps off on himself. The next Blazer football game will be on the road against Wachita Baptist. To follow, to follow the Dean Machine and not miss a beat of the action, check the Valdosta State Athletic website to learn more about VSU football broadcast. Russ Calloway receives the high snap, hands it back off to Eric Sledge, who was brought down for a loss. I was looking, honestly, for a face mask there. He was grabbed pretty high, but evidently the referees didn't see that, or maybe it didn't even happen. I'm 
Staying a lot further away from the action than they are. Or it could be the fact that the refs are like, hey, the game is pretty much over. Let's go ahead and go home. If we let them play, it'll be nope, over in about a matter of minutes. On that replay, as you can see, one of the linemen actually did grab his face mask. So my eyes haven't failed me just yet. Oh, man, hey, maybe the, like I say, the refs might just be ready to go home. You're they, right. They have families just like we do, Josh. <laughs> You're right. It is a Saturday night. They have lives. Russ Calloway checking things down. Four receiver set. He steps back looking to pass. He is pressured and brought down at the 20-yard line. So pretty big loss on the play right there, Trey. It was already third and 12. This is going to lead to the Blazers having to punt the ball away. Well, the good thing is even if they did lose yardage on, they still have the clock moving. It's just about to be four, around four minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. 32. Blazers have 32 to their seven. It's right now 4 and 25, and they're going to go ahead and punt. It's actually four, four minutes left. Blazers leading 32 to 7. Yep. Fourth down, 25 yards to go. This will bring in a new punter, too. This is not Jack Fulford. It's hard to see his number from here. They're trying to somebody new at almost every position out there, Josh. Oh, that is Jack Fulford. Excuse me. It was number 39. I thought it was, I thought it said 89. Another good kick. Ball rolls out of bounds about the 32 yard line. So there's a flag on the play. Don't know exactly what the flag is just yet, but Jack, another good kick. He's been impressive. He's he's one of consistency here. VSU TV will present Vote 2009, a local political forum on Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m. That's Vote 2009 this Tuesday night on Cable Channel 20, VSU TV. So again, one thing to highlight tonight, Trey, is Cedric Jones. He's, he's putting an assault on the record book. And it looks like it was a personal foul on I the guess, Blazers there, Josh. I guess VSU on the kicking team. That's going to bring the ball out to about the 47-yard line. So Southern Arkansas is in a position to do something here with three minutes and 37 seconds left in the game. Don't really expect them to, to come back and win it, but that doesn't mean they can't leave here with a little more pride than what they have right now. So McComey drops back looking to pass, looking for number 10. It is knocked down by number 36 on the VSU defense. That was Sean Weathers. He's a linebacker. He's a senior linebacker, six foot, 188 pounds. So a pretty swift guy there, laid out and prevented anything from happening. Well, Josh, it looks like we're going to have to wait until next week for Cedric Jones to break that record. He's just one reception shy, and I'll say probably close around to 11 yards from moving up in the, in the record books of VSU. Yep, he is attacking those record books, and he's going to leave his mark here as uh, one of the better VSU receivers to ever come through. The snap is back to Ryan McComey, who delivers the pass number 84, who was popped right when he gets it by number 29. 29 is Devin Cannon. Cannon came up and delivered a big hit to make him drop the ball. The pass was intended for Josh Prophet. Prophet could not hold on to the ball. He's a freshman, so... I guess Southern Arkansas may be doing a little bit of the same that VSU is doing, and that's bringing in some guys to gain some experience on the road in conference game. I mean, they're down by 25. Might as well get something positive out of it. But the thing is, I see they, ha they still have their starting quarterback in there, but they're putting in a lot of young, inexperienced guys around there. It might be a, situ a scenario where you can get your starting quarterback injured if you got a lot of young guys out there protecting them. That's true, but they might be using this as a time to try and get the offense to mesh together a little better, play in adversity. McComey drops back, fake throw. I think he faked everyone in the stadium. Looking deep for number nine, almost finds him. Number nine is going to wake up tomorrow and wish he had dove for that ball because if he would have, that probably would have been six. That was Rodney Brown, the receiver, off the fingertips, Trey. What do you, what do you say about if it touches the receiver's hands? You got to catch it. And in, in, this, in that situation, it looks as if he reached for it and decided that he wasn't going to be able to make it, so he just pulled his hands back instead of trying to dive for the ball and make the big play. I know he had to change his, his view on that one. He was looking over his left shoulder and had to turn to look over his right to try and catch it, but you're right, Trey. He did kind of short arm it. He's going to regret that probably. And that's where you have to put your head on the swivel. You can't just look at the ball on your left side and then turn your head completely around to the right side. Just just roll your neck back a little bit. But that is one of the first times tonight that the VSU secondary has allowed a receiver to get behind them. So fortunately, they didn't have to pay for it. McComey looking deep again. And, and number nine again is his intended target. I believe he was trying to go for the pass interference right there. Rodney Brown by diving all over number 21. Rashad Etheridge. Rashad Etheridge. Coverage. But he did not get the call. It, that was went in VSU's favor. So that was fourth down. 
I guess the thing that surprised me the most is that Southern Arkansas actually came out passing the ball instead of just running and trying to go ahead and end the game and hop back on the bus for that long ride home. But I guess they try to get, like you said, get a little bit of their confidence back and see what they can make happen against the second team Blazer defense. Well, VSU is going to be taking over the football with three minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. They're up 32 to 7. They have great field position. The ball's on about the 47 yard line. So <clears throat> head coach David Dean will move his 81.9% conference winning percentage upward as the Blazers seem to be on the right path to take this victory. The ball is handed off. That's a great run right there, with, ending with the stiff arm. Looks like it was number 28 who got the carry. 28 being Theseus Jackson. Haven't seen much of him. And I was looking through the, the stats earlier. David Dean does have an amazing, amazing record here. Like he said, uh, over 81% winning percentage now here at Valdosta State University in conference. I mean, that just kind of shows you why the Blazers have been so successful with that, that strong leadership. Russ Calloway hands the ball off to Theseus Jackson again, who rounds the right corner, gets past number 55, and picks up another couple yards. There's a flag on the play, though. Might have been a late hit there. Might have the been. play. Jackson seemed to be going down out of bounds anyway, so Jackson somebody might have, somebody might have put a hit on him, leading to the to, to the to the penalty. Play. And right now, it's to the point where it seems as if the the coaches are going outside the stadium, just picking guys up off the street to come in to run the football for the Blazers. I mean, they have so many weapons at the running back position, where it's, it's just ridiculous, Josh. Well, one thing VSU may want to try and focus on is keeping their players in bounds to keep this clock running. We're down to two minutes and 43 seconds left in the game, and running out of uh oh. 23 on the offense has been called for a penalty. It was a holding call there, Josh, and it backs the offense up. Well, that's P.J. Katz. He's a junior. Katz, this is one of the first times I remember seeing him on the field, so just maybe some a little early mistake. had not had a chance to catch his rhythm yet. Calloway with the handoff to Jackson again, who's met right at the line. So VSU went from first and 18 to probably about second and 16, not much of a gain. Ball was on the 42. It's now down to about the 39. So we'll see. It was. We'll see where they mark it. And VSU uh, is doing what they set out to do from the beginning when they came out on this drive. They're just keeping the clock moving by making sure that they run the ball, stay within the field of play, and go ahead and go home with the victory. We'll stay well, home with the victory since we're already here. There was a gain of three on the play at second down, 15 yards to go. Ball's on the 39 with two minutes left in the game. So the game is winding down here. Russ Calloway. Analyzing things, hands it off to Eric Sledge, who rounds the right corner. Sledge with a decent pickup there, probably about five yards. And Eric Sledge is one of the bigger the running backs for the VSU Blazers. He's 6'2", 231 pounds. He's also a senior. Well, Trey, while we uh, now that we're down to about a minute and a half left in the game, why don't we try to do a little bit of a game summary here? What do you? What have you seen out of the VSU offense tonight? I've seen the VSU offense doing exactly what Coach David Dean set them out to do from the beginning and why they practiced so hard after that loss to Newberry. Come back in, execute the game plan, set up the screens, hit the wide open receivers, and just make the plays. Callaway is getting ready for the snap. He receives it and hands it back off. The ball looks to have fumbled, and it's recovered by Southern Arkansas. So there is a turnover right there from Eric Sledge. He was hit as he was being handed the ball. So an unfortunate turnover, but I don't think it's going to hurt us too much. But uh, so what are you seeing out of the uh, SAU side of things on the offensive side of the ball? What did you see tonight from them? It looks as if the Southern Arkansas offense was being a little too conservative. They were doing too many screen passes, trying to set them up that kept getting blown up by the Blazer defense because they expected them. It looks as if they did anyway. And if not that, they did a quick pitch back, which took them back more yards than they gained. So in the end, they were just being a little too conservative, and maybe if they'd opened it up a little more, they would have had a little more success against this Blazer defense. Yeah, the defense has been very successful tonight as McComey receives a snap, looking for a receiver. The pass is broken up. More good defense from VSU. What did VSU do differently against this team than Newberry, from what you can tell? From what I'm seeing, Josh, the secondary is playing a heck of a lot better. They're not letting the receivers get deep on them. And if they do get deep, they're right there with them, stride for stride, making sure that they don't see the ball clearly. If not that, they take their eye off due to the fact that they have a man running with them the whole, st the whole way. We're down to a minute here left in the game. I agree with you, Trey. I think one of the things they really did and worked on was their tackling. Whenever the ball was received by the other team, they were right there swarming. And it wasn't arm tackles. They were bringing them down. McComey steps back, hits his receiver across the middle, picks up a few yards there as Quentin Porter 
Uh, we're down to 51 seconds left in the game. That might be enough for a first down. So Porter with a, a decent reception there. BSU has really dominated offensively tonight. I know up until the third quarter, Southern Arkansas at the end of the third quarter only had 47 offensive yards on the evening, whereas VSU had over 320 at the time. So VSU has really offensively done what they want to do. Pass comes up a little short. The pass was intended for number 84, Josh Prophet, a wide receiver. And like it might have just been a miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback exactly which route he was supposed to run there. Yeah. Well, it's now second down and 10 for the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders. 39.8 seconds left on the clock. So VSU at this point is just waiting it out. They've done a great job tonight. They're up by 25. It looks like they may finish with that score. What do you think this does for their conference standing, Trey? Is this going to really boost their confidence and maybe be a, a reminiscent of 2004 where they lose the season opener and go on to do big things such as win a national championship? Uh, even the coaches expected a whole lot of this team. Everybody thought this team was better than some of the, the, the couple two teams who actually went on to win the national title. So I'm expecting a lot out of them also. If they can continue to keep up this type of play for the rest of the season, I expect to see great things out of this team. Well, the clock is still running after that last running play. It's down to 15 seconds here. Fans are beginning to leave Baysmore Hyder Stadium after seeing their hometown VSU team come out here and handle the business that they expected to handle each week. McComey steps back, looking deep. Somewhat of almost a Hail Mary pass. And it falls harmlessly to the ground. And with that, the game is over. VSU takes this one 32 to seven. They now win. Oh, excuse me, there's a flag on the play. But with this victory, VSU will move to one and one, one and oh in the GSC Conference. They will have now won their 10th straight game against Southern Arkansas, and they will be 11-3 in the series overall. So VSU has really dominated this series between, between them and Southern Arkansas. And it looks as if they're going to go ahead and replay that down there, Josh, after the penalty. Almost kind of a wasted, wasted flag there, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a pass interference call, so I guess one of the referees isn't as anxious to get home as the others. Might be a fight on the way out of, outside of the stadium after that one, Josh. Are there any final thoughts that you have on the evening, Trey? We, we came out and we did what we, the coaches expected us that We executed on defense. We stopped the run. We were able to stop the deep passes. And we were able to keep the offense on the field and put up points, which is what we need to do. McCone drops back the pass once again. With a, no seconds on the clock now, it's, the time has expired, and he throws long, and his wide receiver dies, but he misses. The next, the next Blazer football game will be on the road against Wachita Baptist. To follow the Dean Machine and not miss a beat of action, check the Valdosta State Athletic website to learn more about VSU football broadcast. Thank you for joining us here tonight at Bays, Baysmore Hyder Stadium where the VSU Blazers defeated Southern Arkansas Mule Riders 32-7 and advanced to 1-0 in the GSC and 1-1 and overall. State, come back next time when we hear for more exciting Blazer football. Stadium on September 26th at 7 p.m. That will be the Blazers' next home game. The Blazers will be on the road on September 19th at Wachita Baptist. You can listen to that game on the Blazer Sports Network, where Dick Rocky, Tom Odom, and Wes James will bring you all the action on WDDQ Talk 92.1 in Valdosta. You can also follow the Blazers by logging on to the BSU Athletics website and following the link to the Talk 92.1 website. Once again, the Blazers will be on the road to face Wachita Baptist on September 19th at 8 p.m. And we'll be back in action here at Baseball Rider Stadium to host West Alabama on September 26th at 7 p.m. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for your support of Blazer football. Please drive safely.